Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. We have AJ here. Hey. Oh. Ah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And Will. And Will. Will's also here. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, that guy over, over there. Uh, yeah, you know. What do we know, Will? I was gonna I was gonna call myself the fat one. <laughs> the hell? We've had fatter, I'm sure. Good... Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to say Luigi anymore because of Dan? Is that is yeah, that what happened? Much. Basically, <laughs> All right. Basically. I mean, listen, that wasn't my fault. He was he was actually Luigi when we played 3D World. I mean, yeah, you I, saw I you feel, were being replaced. I, but I was. So. <laughs> I hate you. I haven't changed my Twitter handle yet, though, so I gotta, I just gotta work on that. Guys, what are you, so you're, you're like the Goomba now? <laughs> I guess I'm the Waluigi or the Wario. No, you. One I've the... always. This is how I've always said it. I've always said I am the Mario of the Wolf Den, and you are the Robin. <laughs> he doesn't even get to be the Batman. Damn. No. That's messed up. He doesn't no, want to be. I, he likes Robin more. I okay. do. I was. That's fair. I was, That's fair. I always considered it to be Jimmy Olsen because he's way nerdier. And That's gets... even worse. <laughs> I know, but he had his own ongoing series before Robin did. So there you go. Oh, I yeah. Got my, I got my windows all messed up here. Anyway, guys, we uh, welcome. We got a lot to talk about here on this 20th episode of the Wolf Den Podcast. Um, That's right. Uh, we got AJ here because it's Pokemon news to be had. It's true. Um, it's true. And there's a big Pokemon drop. Sometimes you see AJ. A wild AJ might appear. Yeah. Um, but first, there is some uh, free games that you need to download. Yes. Right I don't know if you know this, ladies and gentlemen, but February is over. It is now March. And that means if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, they're going to give you some free ga- free games as a free way games. to thank you. Free games <laughs> as a way to thank you for paying $60 a year uh for your membership uh not a great month for either of course company but but sony uh does have one particular heavy hitter and that is uh, the final fantasy 7 remake whoa that would be not a great there's weird stuff with it though because yeah they have the okay well well so this is (laughs) We'll get into all the weird stuff like in a little bit, but we'll we'll start off with this. This is the Final Fantasy VII remake. This is the same game that came out last year. Um, everybody, people really like this game. Uh, if you haven't played it yet, uh, this is your chance to finally do it. Uh, however, and we'll talk about this a little more when we talk about the the PlayStation State of Play um, video. Uh, and they say this in the article. Please note that the this is the PS4 version of Final Fantasy VII Remake, not the PlayStation 5 upgrade. So? Well, as we we mentioned, it's still free, but they're specifically only giving you the PS4 version, not the upgraded PS5 version. Yeah, and the way that they're wording it, it doesn't sound like there is a way. To upgrade. Yeah. So, like, if you want this theoretically, it's not free. Because, <laughs> like, if yeah. you want the the upgraded thing, you just got to buy the game again. Yeah. Yeah, I, so I, the PS- I still think this the- is a great way to get... It's a freaking free. It's the original game. Well, I mean, nobody expected the game to even come to PlayStation 5 with upgrades and stuff until a week ago. Well, I think, I think you'll be changing your tune when we get into the state of play. Because the PS5 version of... Final Fantasy 7 has exclusive features not coming to the PS4 version, specifically an entire DLC campaign. This is Spider-Man Miles Morales all over again with that whole complicated thing of like, what do you got to pay to upgrade? Except this time you can't pay $20 to update. Yeah. upgrade. You got to buy the full thing. I still think, I mean, this is, get it I still think this is a great thing to, for, 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 Sound. shut up alerts i still think this is a great it's it's st- it's still almost the entire it's a game gateway drug. That's funny. <laughs> it's a gateway drug yes exactly yeah. like 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 no one was promised 
Final Fantasy VII for free with updates. You're getting Final right, Fantasy VII, like, well, the one that you that you scenario? knew existed a week ago. Well, okay, right. yes, but two things. One, when they when they added control to PlayStation Plus, they gave you both versions, the PS4 and the PS5 version, because that was its own separate, less annoying but still kind of annoying debacle. Light wasn't shining on me. And control two, had enough problems. Two, they just announced that the PS5 version, the PS5 upgrade to Final Fantasy VII Remake was going to have an exclusive DLC campaign that you can't get on the PS4 at all. And the way they're wording this press release is that the PS Plus version of FF7 Remake is not eligible to be upgraded. Yeah, because you you didn't pay for it. You didn't pay for Control yeah, either, but they still gave you the, the PS5 upgrade. Control is another bullshit dumb thing because if of they, all the shit they, they did with least, Xbox. Like, a mad control for saying, that. But if, if if they at least gave the option to pay for the upgrade, that this yeah. would be a different situation. You can pay for but the upgrade. Like, $70. No, you can't. You have to buy, <laughs> buy the game all over again. Yeah. That's... <laughs> It's, it's, I, I, I think it's, they're giving you, this is, you get, take what you can get here. You know, this is like an amazing PlayStation Plus title to be just given out to people. Nah, dude, I'd rather just buy the game. <laughs> just it, don't, it, don't, it, don't even taunt me with it. Just let it, me, it, like, if I gotta like, buy the game, I'm buy, I gotta buy You the have game. the option, but no one's stopping you from buying the game. Go buy the game. The, the if you don't want to buy the game, me. you can play almost <laughs> the entire thing for free. Sony has had a bad enough time, like with, you know, explaining their backwards compatibility and explaining like upgrading your game to the PS5 version on PS5. You know, the fact that when the PS5 launched, it automatically downloaded the PS4 versions of all the games. Yes. Like, you know, they've had a bad enough go at like explaining and working people through their backwards compatibility and their upgrading program. And once you start to think they're smoothing things out, they do something like this that just further complicates the matter. Sony has a terrible upgrade system. Sony, Sony has been doing yeah. a terrible job at moving things from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. There's no doubt about that. There's no argument there. So what the hell else <laughs> do we have coming? Uh, Remnant from the Ashes on PS4, Maquette on PS5, and far point for psvr oh oh far point yes, yeah yes. you know i like vr now will <laughs> yes i heard it's true you do um this is that game that i always wanted to demo whenever i go to like no it's not <laughs> <laughs> is it no it is this is the game with i think this was the game that you got with the gun with the gun yep with <laughs> oh, okay yeah, so I yeah 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 I I I always wanted to try this I never I never did though but I don't have a gun so how the hell am I gonna play this? Oh, buy a gun, <laughs> get you a gun. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you need move controllers I think. Oh, oh that's yes. optimized for the PlayStation VR AIM controller and fully playable with the DualShock wireless controller. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. This PlayStation yeah. Plus games month is the used car salesman of PlayStation Four games because it's like you want this thing you can get another thing that's kind of like it later <laughs> like do, do you do you but, do you play this do you play this game like like this with the controller do you hold the controller like this with you, the gun you, <laughs> no because you could use the controller it says can you it do says, down guns in this game <laughs> you do what now down guns what does that mean? Like Joker, down, dude. Yeah, what the hell is a down gun? When you shoot the when you shoot the gun down at with Joker. Oh, like Joker, oh like like oh, weeb Joker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not the real Joker. Not the real Joker. Weeb Joker. Weeb the Joker. anime Joker. You're right, anime, right, right, right. The weeb Joker. Yes, 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 yes. Uh oh, I missed this one. The Annihilation. Superman, no, <laughs> Destruction All Stars. Yeah, that's still available. This that's is available to like four cares. Yeah, I heard that that uh, game is. Am I thinking of the right one? Is this the one? This is a PS5 game that... Yeah, this is the one. You know, yeah. Everybody was like, this is weird. And and it made everybody realize mm -hmm. that 
microphone being defaulted to on is a terrible idea. <laughs> oh, another thing that's sick. Their the their play at home initiative. Ratchet oh, and Clank yes. is straight up free right now. You don't yeah, need PlayStation uh, Plus. Didn't that's even mention that. Ratchet and Clank, the, the remake on PS4 is available for free. You don't need PlayStation Plus. So you don't even need PlayStation it Plus. Now. Link no. in chat. <laughs> that is <laughs> download it now. This is great. This is a great month. Even yeah. though it's all wacky and weird and all over the place. But that's great. Yeah. Uh now on to Xbox. Now on to Xbox. Uh Let's so see if on they the can Xbox. Keep it up. Uh not really. So on the Xbox One from March first to the thirty first is Warface Breakout. And from March 16th to April 15th is Vicious Attack Llama Apocalypse. Yo, there's a llama apocalypse? <laughs> the, I'm down. <laughs> it's the worst kind of apocalypse. And then mm -hmm. over on the Xbox 360, which you can play on your Xbox One or Series X, uh, from March 1st to the 15th is Metal Slug 3. And then March 16th to the 31st is Port Royale 3. I don't know what the hell that uh, is. Oh my I god, there are llamas getting shot in the neck and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? It's uh it's an apocalypse with llamas in it, Bob. It's you know, kill or be killed. I thought wait, do these llamas spit at you? Wait. You need to spit, because that's something llamas this do. This looks like that <laughs> this looks like I made a game with zombies in it. But with but, llamas. But with llamas, yeah. And you're in a mech for some reason, bowing down llamas. Oh my god, I hate this. <laughs> Take down the llamanati and pray that the llamazon blesses you. <laughs> <laughs> Who made this friggin' game? I'm looking it up. Pro definitely someone we've never heard of. <laughs> Somebody who needs the the boost of a games with gold. <laughs> I want to know if it's the same guy who made a game with zombies in it. Developer one Rogue Code. Uh, I mean, there are, there have been other twin stick shooters like that. Dev at Rare Ltd. making a game. Previously made a different game. <laughs> uh, I I feel like this is the guy. Oh, look at his top <laughs> his top tweet. Make a game. Get poor. Check mark. <laughs> yeah. Gold. Well, all right, dude. This is the guy. I feel like it's probably the same guy. Anyway, was that it? That's all of them. That's it. Yeah, this is worse. This yeah, is significantly worse. But I mean, no, but when you got biggest... Game Pass, my guy, yes. so they win in the end. <laughs> when your they... biggest game of the month is Metal Slug Three, I think Whoa. that's an automatic. Hello, we just talked about the llama game. Will call and down. the llama that's... game. So they, what's Warface Breakout? Warface is that free to play, uh, yeah, battle royale situation. Tight gunplay and strategic Sounds team like no school, cooperation. Right? Yeah. Define this tactical online first person shooter. Make split second decisions. Okay. PVP. Yeah. It's so it's Warface. Okay, it's just more Warface. Um, they don't have any new uh. Play uh, uh Xbox Game Pass games. Uh, I don't. Usually so. they say it in this uh, in this release. Not in this release. Yeah, no, I think they just ran. No, like they have I a whole know. Twitter dedicated to being like, we are adding games today. Yeah, Game Pass is something different. Well, usually they do it around the same time. Uh, I think the the last. Here we go. Coming soon to Game Pass. Dirt Five, Killer Queen, Black Wreckfest. And more. Okay. Never mind. Xbox loses. That, that was in that was on February sixteenth. Sorry, Xbox. You gotta pick up the pace next time. Yeah. Rip, dude. Uh but hey. There, there's all there's also free games on uh Twitch Prime. You can get free games if you have Amazon Prime. You look at your Twitch guy, you get Twitch Prime. You can also give us a sub, thank you very much. Um there's also free games on the Epic Store. There's free games on Steam? No. Anyway. I don't think they do a free game. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's Twitch and Epic Store. I know that much. Yeah. Um, 
we got notifications that I forgot to read in the beginning. Uh, we got Hector Bism. Thank you for the four months. Sup? We got Ray Zeflin, who said with 31 months, says, Sounds a little gay. Grow the fuck up, Ray Zeflin. We have Angry Eric with seven months. Seven months with the crew. P.S. Wood is Walmart brand version of Bob. I will not argue. <laughs> Thank you, Angry Eric. Um, Zavala with eight months. Will and AJ on a podcast? We love to see it. Thank you, Zavala. Luke Antone with 24 months. I finally made it to two years subs. Luke Antone, congratulations. Happy two year anniversary. I didn't get you anything. Luibic with three months. What did you boys have for dinner tonight? I had a late lunch of Chinese food. Uh, I also had, had a Chinese sub. Food. A sub? Whoa, a sub. Explain the sub yeah. to me. It was like a pulled chicken sort of situation where like, mm -hmm. it was good to eat. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. I like fried onions on it and stuff. <laughs> Cyrus, thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, anyway, main topic, Pokemon. Now the reason AJ is here, Pokemon. I thought, I thought he was here because he liked us well. Well, mostly for Pokemon. He, he uses mm -hmm. his friendship with us to come on and talk about pokemon wow that's crazy <laughs> actually it's always frame one as soon as people are like wait a pokemon thing happened wolf den live is today or wolf den podcast now pokemon aj got to tweet them both <laughs> and set that up and then i'm like hey okay <laughs> i'm down um oh chris bx nice for the 32 months appreciate you coming in hot uh so there's pokemon presents last friday uh, uh yes Yes, 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 it was Friday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Tail end of the week. Uh, they announced Post Malone doing a thing, saying the sex <laughs> word in the middle of a friggin' uh, in, in front of Lugia. He did, he did. I didn't, yeah. I didn't watch, I only saw that one clip. Same. Um, <laughs> I saw, I watched his cover of, uh, listened to his cover of uh, Hootie and the Blowfish, Only Want to Be With You. Guys, stop <laughs> tweeting me that it's good. It's not. <laughs> I only heard part of that song. It was all right. It's it, no, I'm too I'm too close to that song. So it's, it ain't no hootie. It ain't it, no. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. So we got. So the first thing that they talked about was Pokemon Snap. I yes. clicked on the little little scroll wheel and I scrolled right past Pokemon Snap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you. Watch this after the fact. I hate. Yeah, I watched it after the fact. I hate crapping on pokemon snap so much i feel like i crap on it a lot but i just mm -hmm. i i do not I see feel like this, this is luigi's game. mansion all over again i think it's luigi's mansion you really think that this game's gonna be good i don't <laughs> I, don't I think, think it's gonna be good. yeah i think it's gonna be good i don't think it's gonna be like the best thing in the world but did I you think, think it's gonna be good did you think mystery dungeon it's was good, good. <laughs> <laughs> did you think mystery dungeon was good on the switch <laughs> Yeah, I liked Mystery Dungeon. Fuck that game. That game sucks. <laughs> yeah, but you don't like Pokemon enough, dude. <laughs> I don't like Pokemon enough, and I didn't play Mystery Dungeon when it was on the freaking Game Boy Advance, and it plays like a Game Boy Advance game I didn't play, on I played, the Switch. I played it on the DS, but, but yeah, I played it back then, so that I, that's another layer of it, too, I guess. Yeah, uh, I, it, I, they changed nothing in that game, and I feel like this is going to be a very similar thing. It's going to be very, like, phoned in. It's gonna be. It's gonna be very yeah, much like the N sixty four version. Like, I, I can, I can understand you feeling like that with Mystery Dungeon and not liking that because it's not your type of game. But Pokemon mm -hmm. Snap is like not a super specific type of game. <laughs> like it's a, it's not really something that's like off putting to a certain. That's why so many people are hype about Pokemon Snap because literally anybody can play it, and it's like oh, it's just the cute animals yeah. running all over the place. It, you're literally just like just watching. You're just watching a movie of of cute animals. It's a rail shooter. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a rail shooter where nobody dies. Mm -hmm. You just throw apples at and them. You know what's gonna be you fun? Get a picture. You know what's gonna be fun? You're when you're like, oh, I forgot to throw an apple instead of a pester ball. Let me play the whole level again until I get to the freaking Venusaur. Oh, I no, but that's again. What, Let that's me the play part the whole that is supposed level to be. Again. That's the part that is supposed to be fun because it's like emergent gameplay. And now yeah. that it's like 
uh, more grand development cycles and stuff like that and emerging gameplay is like a thing, TM, <laughs> it's go- I think it's going to be a lot more deeper of an experience where it's like there's so many more of those things where it's like, oh, I threw the apple at the egg and it fell in the thing and then Moltres came out, you know, like a lot more moments like that yeah. that are better hidden too. I think you're giving the Pokemon company a lot of credit. It's not. You're giving them a lot. It's of, Bandai Namco <laughs> developing the game. All right, you're giving Bandai Namco too much credit. I feel like they're not going to put as much work into this as they as they could. I, I don't I think they. Like... Will, I don't think they're going to put as much work into it as they could. But I think there's going to be enough work into it where it feels substantially better than the original game because the original it, game is on N64. <laughs> it should at the very least have a more robust feature set and you know, options and, you know, photo editing capabilities than what was available on the N64. And for all intents and purposes, it looks like it is. But my question is, is it going to be enough to warrant a whole new game? Because, I mean, from AJ's perspective, you seem to take the position of it is. And from Bob's perspective, you seem to be taking the position of this is the same fucking game that was on the <laughs> Nintendo 64. I think that the thing that warrants it being a whole new game is that people have literally been begging for them to make this a whole new game, and it's Pokemon. It's right. it's like very similar to people being like, it's Pokemon, it's a Pokemon game, and this used to be forty dollars on my 3DS. This isn't worth for uh, sixty dollars, and then they put it out, and it's the second best selling Pokemon game yeah. of all time, or whatever. Right? Like the Pokemon brand is the thing that's worth sixty dollars. It doesn't matter what the game is; they can put out whatever game, and as long as it feels even semi like adjacent to a console game with pikachu in it people are going to pay 60 dollars for it and it's going to sell like i wouldn't be surprised if this cracked at least 8 million units i definitely think it's going to sell a butt ton i just think that the pokemon company knows that and they don't need to put a lot of work into it (laughs) they could just fart it out and it'll be and it'll sell a butt ton and people will love it and uh or not love it but it'll still sell a butt ton but anyway like i said i skipped right past that and what was the first thing they announced uh the uh, the remakes yeah the uh brilliant diamond and i was uh, diamond and shining pearl Pearl i was matter dude who cares about pearl (laughs) i was confused about this because i didn't know if it was a remake or a new game until and I don't think they even said it was a remake until I looked it up they later. They didn't say, I think they said, I think they're specifically calling it a remaster. Ah, uh, okay. Faith, faithful remakes is what they're called. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's I, somewhere in the middle. I didn't realize what it was until afterwards when I, when, when I looked it up. I, I didn't, well, I didn't I think, get from the trailer know, that it was a remake. We're I also never played Diamond had, and Pearl, so I don't. I don't know. We, we've had yeah, Leaf, Leaf Green and Fire Red. We've had Heart Gold and Soul Silver. We've had Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I think we're at the point now where we know that if and when they were to remake Diamond and Pearl, they would, you know, be much less like full remakes, more so upgraded um, remakes than they were. You know, I think that that's why people. Well, removed from the context of Arceus because I think Arceus or Arceus is saving them here because well, that's like a completely separate thing yeah I'm talking about the, like the lineage of like the remake right right, right right I know I know what you're saying but what I'm saying is uh these are very different <laughs> from from those because usually with those what they do with those remakes is they're like okay we're gonna make gen one again but in the gen three engine Okay, we're going to do Gen 2 again, but in the Gen 4 engine. This is not the Gen 8 engine, and that's what a lot of people were saying they wanted. But this is more like, like if if Arceus is the Breath of the Wild, this is the Link's Awakening, and people are upset about that. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I was a little confused when I saw this, because again, I had, the, I had it in my head that this was maybe like a, a sequel in the same region or something. And the way it looks, I was like, I don't, I don't understand. Is this, is this, I don't, I don't get it. Um, but now I get it. It's just a freaking a remake or a remaster, however you want to put it. Uh, it looks Faithful really cute. remake. 
It's like the Link's Awakening of Diamond and yeah. Pearl. Yeah. And I think that's yes. I think that's great. I will play this because I didn't play Diamond and Pearl. And this is a great opportunity for me to jump into Diamond and Pearl. Um, I think yeah. it looks uh, cute as shit. I like it. I'm uh, down. Noted that the games will be directed by the original Diamond and Pearl director, Juichi Masuda, as well as ILCA's uh, Yuichi yep, Ueda. I, ILCA is uh, the development studio who's making yeah, this they're called Ilka. Yeah. Ilka? Yeah. Okay. Ilka. For posterity. <laughs> That's why you're here, AJ. It's true. Um, but yeah, they, they talked about how they worked on Pokemon Home. Uh, so they're like... That that's something that a lot of people have been like. Well, they they've been telling Pokemon Company that they want them to like re uh, reconfigure how they develop Pokemon games because like the usual like um, process is that they're like, okay, new generation of Pokemon. Here's this game. Sometimes there's a remake in between that, or they'll do like the the plus version, the the new game plus <laughs> edition of yeah. Pokemon. You know, yeah. the the yellows, the crystals, all those, and then they'll do the next generation, and that's usually like a three year cycle or whatever. And there's like a new Pokemon game every year, um, but here they're like, this still looks like a 3ds game, and it's sixty dollars, and it's on a console, so give them more time. This feels like this is them trying to buy themselves that time because instead of game freak making the remake game freak is only like tangentially uh related to the remake in the sense that they're like okay here's our director <laughs> you can use him and ilka you do most of the grunt work on this is diamond and pearl uh a generation that pokemon fans generally like yes yep okay but gen generation four is like I would say up until like Gen 6 or no Gen 7 probably. Gen 7 is like a huge swath of the community's favorite generation cuz the community is like a, a sliding uh it's a rotating door. It's like okay, my I came in in Gen 1. So my favorite generation is Gen 1 and then the generation below me is like my favorite generation is 2, you know, like that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um there, and I'm a different example, obviously, because like I like pretty much all of them and I don't have one shining favorite of Pokemon, but there's a good amount of people that are around my age group that do like Gen 4 a whole lot. Like Lee is very excited about this <laughs> or excited about Gen 4. I don't know. I don't I don't think he likes this game. I think he's more on the, the train of people that if Arceus wasn't announced would be mad <laughs> about this. I it looks like um like you got this like chibi looking overworld and stuff but when it goes yeah. into the battles they're like normal and it looks yeah. like it, it looks like let's go yeah it looks exactly like yeah. let's go it yeah that that's weird like it is so is the whole thing in the let's go engine and they just made the chibi stuff in that engine because this that's that looks totally like. different or is there two engines going on here i, I don't think so it seems like it's in the the let's go engine but it doesn't look like it's using let's go mechanics so i think that that's like an oversimplified way of saying because they're using like let's go-esque models but i don't think it's like one thing where they're like okay this is a let's go game right right um because it's regular battles you know it's not like the pokemon go mechanics or anything like that right um, right so uh so this is coming out late 2021 so that's coming out this year and I will be playing it when it comes out right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. I'm sure so will AJ. It's true, I will. Um, and finally, they have this one, which came completely out of left field for everybody. Um, Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is in the same region? Yeah. Yes. Same okay, so, so I watched this with Parker live. <laughs> And we knew beforehand that people were hype about this direct because it le or not direct this presents because this leaked. And when those like the last game, Shining Pearl and Brilliant Diamond were announced, we were like, clearly there's something else because people would not be happy about this. <laughs> like we knew for sure that there was going to be some sort of like huge thing because of those games. And this was that. <laughs> Uh, I'm super stoked for this because I'm so down for a different type of Pokemon game. Like one that mm -hmm. uh, maybe isn't necessarily like the same sort of, uh, you know, 
turn-based oh, no. RPG formula yeah. that we've seen. And it looks like it's still turn-based. Yeah, At least it's the still turn-based, like but the turn. there's definitely a more sense of um, it, it's less like your traditional random encounter, yeah. go into like a basically another dimension to do the battle type of R RPG mechanic. It, they're describing know, it, like, it as an action RPG. That's yeah. what they're describing it as. So. Uh, you don't think it's like um, Final Fantasy, sort of like uh, like real time turn base, whatever you call uh, that. I'm not. See, the thing is, like how the how the like cameras set up. It tells me that the trainer, in some way, is important because they focus on the trainer more they do more than they do on the Pokemon. Right. And like in the in the first like trailer before they like the announcer or whatever comes into play and is like, this is a brand new po and you know talking. It's just like the 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 shots to get you all excited. Um, it just lingering on the trainer the whole time so it's like does the trainer have more input in this is this like a nino cooney sort of situation um because like you have a dodge roll why do you dodge roll <laughs> <laughs> like what is attacking me that i like that. Clearly, this, this is the dark souls of pokemon games yeah. it's implied that you are going to physically fight these pokemon <laughs> yeah well so uh, per the ign article and this is com apparently coming from the official website in order to capture pokemon You'll need to observe, observe them to learn their behavior, then carefully sneak up, aim your Pokeball, and let fly. So it sounds like you're going hunting. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that. I mean, I was hunting. That was like another thing I was going to bring up. It's it's funny because it like the shots that they showed in this trailer. It seems like a role reversal sort of thing because it's like you're walking through the grass and you're like, oh man, I hope the Pokemon doesn't find me. My Pokemon are about to die. I need to go to the Pokemon Center or whatever. But you're the, like, they're the ones that are like creeping through the grass now. Where <laughs> like you're yeah. like, all right, I'm I gotta find you now. You know that that sort of thing. So so, so um, in, in this shot, it, it's sort of. I mean, I don't want to say it's like it's like let's go, but um. Mm -hmm she just straight up throws the pokeball at this pokemon Eats the pokeball. yeah yeah and it captures yeah. the pokemon but it looks like he can get out um mm -hmm. so that's freaking cool i'm down for that uh not physically throwing the joy con but you know like in world yeah. just throw just yeeting a pokeball at a pokemon but then i guess if things go awry you have to straight up physically beat the shit out of the pokemon <laughs> yeah yeah or as uh as uh, Sushi Solar says in the chat, can I drop kick a Charmander then? <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody else in the chat said it. They, uh, somebody in the chat said that they said it's real time turn based. The Z for M forces they said it is real time turn based. I don't know who they is, and I don't have a source. Uh, but, yeah, um, they said uh, it's an action RPG, but they in this trailer and in no official communication that I've seen have they said that the battle system is any different than normal. I hope so. That would be dope. It's, it's but, hard to just, tell because like uh, the camera seems to be locked in a rotation, but mm -hmm. that could beat anything. Yeah, it's doing it again here, and there's like only two shots where an actual battle's happening. And you're not really doing anything. You just gotta stand in there while the Pokemon's doing it. Maybe you know what it probably yeah, is. Like, you can, you're probably you can sending see... the Pokemon out, and then you get to run around and do other things. Yeah, so that would be like kind of Dragon Quest Eleven. Like Dragon Quest Eleven has a, a an option where like you can move around. It doesn't really do anything though. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. it doesn't even do like the Xenoblade thing where it's like Xenoblade position matters. It's like okay, I'm behind you, so this attack that I do does more damage. So, or I'm beside you, so it can knock you over. You know, like that right. sort of stuff. According, this doesn't even do that. according to the official website, it says you can also have your ally Pokemon battle wild Pokemon that you hope to catch. Just throw the Pokeball holding your ally Pokemon near a wild Pokemon and you'll seamlessly enter battle and command your Pokemon by choosing from moves it knows. Mm -hmm. So there is, there does seem to be an element of traditional uh, Pokemon battling in there, but it all happens, you know, it, you know, it happens much more seamlessly. It, than it, it does. Doesn't yeah. Go, like, it doesn't go. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that's what I meant by like, big, another big, dimension. I mean, it might, subspace. it might do that. It might do that. And the, and the sort of way that like, uh, breath of the wild doesn't do the whole thing where it's like, da, 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 and like the whole cut scene, every time you get any type of item, it like yeah. incorporates that into the thing. So it's like reference, you know? So like, just it might music. make that the music noise, comes in. like, like in red like dead, the how, how they like, just, in Red Dead, they just pick up, they just add a track to the music when when like shit goes yeah. down. 
Yeah. Um, and it's like the thing that a lot of people are talking about here is that so in every other Pokemon game, like since they've gone 3D, obviously, um, they just are like, okay, you're in a grassland. So this is the grassland background. This is what it looks like. But literally, wherever you are during the battle, that's where the battle takes place. Um, mm-hmm. So that's like another cool thing about this that's different. Yeah. It'll make random encounters less annoying, I think, because you'll still be in the world. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, Brandon in the chat says, what do you think is going to happen to competitive when Legends comes out? I don't, I don't think anything. I think... I think that they will just I use think, the other shit. I think that people are... I'm hyped for this game. Don't get me wrong. But I think people are putting too much stake in this game. I think this game is not as big as people think it is. Um, I don't, scope-wise. Yeah, this, this doesn't this look game like feels feels like competitive focused. It's, yeah, this game feels like a Pokemon Coliseum, a Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, but more tailored to the mainline games, right? So it feels almost like it's an experiment. Like, I remember we talked about right before um, Sword and Shield came out, how it was like them dipping their toe in open world Pokemon. This feels like the next step in that. A stopgap almost of like, what if we did something like this for Gen 9? And then if this works out, they go deeper down the action RPG distinguished, I mean, like, uh, distinction. And then that's when we're like, okay, we're shifting it up now. And it's this full game and you're going to all the different gyms and it's new Pokemon. Uh, this very much so has big spinoff energy to me. And the second I knew that was when they were like, here's your starters. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is a spinoff. <laughs> like, this isn't like the next big Pokemon game. I'm yeah, hoping... the spinoffs are from all different. The uh, starters are from all different regions. They're not from. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm hoping that this is like a, a single player focused, like uh, yeah, I don't know, like uh, I don't want to say Dark Souls, but you know what I mean, <laughs> like like <laughs> yeah, like an adventure game. You know, right. I'm hoping that we get that, and uh, it doesn't need to be as as deep as a as a as like a friggin' Gen Four. But uh yeah, I think the I, mechanics I want, are like, going to be like the I, same. Like the battle mechanics are still going to be the same. The rules are still going to be the same. But it's not going to yeah. have, really, if any focus at all on multiplayer, very little. Yeah, um, I, so. I would I would like a good like. I, in my head, this is like a like a like a single player like. 15 hour like or 20 right. hour linear experience even though it's open world so but yeah it'll like, be like, like the game linear pokemon games like coliseum and, and xd that's what i think that this is going to be like because mm-hmm. like in those games they had like a pokemon stadium sort of mode you know where it's like oh you have these pokemon so you can play them or whatever um or you can like use the pokemon you have or random selection of rental pokemon and battle your friends uh but you it wasn't like link cable stuff Right. Uh, so people were comparing this to Breath of the Wild because it has yeah. the same shot that Breath of the Wild has in the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't pull that, but I have it on a tweet somewhere. Um, and oh, here it is. They did the shot. LOL. They did. It just straight up. It's straight up. Breath the same. Of the Wild yeah. Shot. Well, is this from? A movie or something, though. I feel like this has got to be like a generic <laughs> shot. Yeah, is this like a not, a, like not a, a specific? It's not from a specific movie, but you will often see like movies do something similar to this, where you know they they walk out and they see like this brand new world they've never seen before, and the camera just either zooms out or like pans back to show you everything. So, it, it, it just it's, doesn't it's help that the colors special, are really. almost exactly the same. And the that, and like the, the shape thing. of the like, bottles is like Nintendo very similar. Game, it's a Nintendo game set in the wilderness, um, where your protagonist is standing on a on a hilltop, and like it's the camera zooms past to show more forest area. Yeah, look at the vistas. So, yeah, I, there was another shot I think that was like very similar to or something. Um, but whatever, man. Everybody always talked about, oh, I want Breath of the Wild, but Pokemon. And now everyone's like, yeah. they stole from Breath of the Wild. And they're like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay, yeah. here it is. <laughs> but but then I tweeted Pokemon, something like as, that. As I tweeted. Go, go yeah. ahead. I, I tweeted, Pokemon, are you happy now? Uh-huh. 
I, I tweeted something like that, and I got a lot of comments that were like, yeah, except it looks a lot worse. And then they were taking pictures of, again, <laughs> the trees and saying that there still needs to, there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, it's almost as if they started working on Breath of the Wild in like 2011, and it didn't come out till six years later. <laughs> like, Breath of the Wild is definitely a prettier game, but I mean, this is still it pretty is, for too. sure, for sure, this definitely. Is still pretty. But this isn't that. This is not Breath of the Wild. Like they're they're drawing parallels, but it will not it, like set your expectations way below that because it's not. They're not realistic they're, to expect. People aren't going to be right. happy until we get like an actual. Skyrim or Dark Souls looking mm -hmm. Pokemon game. And even then, it's someone's still gonna have a problem with the fucking trees. They're gonna I, be like, this isn't actual real life. This it's yeah. Gen 10, dude. If the Pokemon can't punch me in my face, it's a bad game. <laughs> Why do they look like anime people? Mm -hmm. I, I I think that um I think that this is the their uh like this is them dipping their toes in an eventual very big like yeah. open pokemon game yeah. and just like let's go introduced some mechanics uh that they'll use in future games this will introduce some mechanics that they might use in a future big mainline pokemon game maybe and then people will be mad about yeah the the thing that like blows my mind is that like even this the response to this from people that are like positive about it where it's like game freaks listening and it's like are they like this feels like textbook game freak game freak and that that that's not a slight to them or anything like that but what game freak always does is they're like how about we try this you know like they they just make incremental progress because they're the <laughs> biggest media franchise in the world they don't want to like you know throw you in an ice bath <laughs> they want to be like all right but what if we change this <laughs> you know Mm -hmm. um and this is just another version of that them like introducing a little bit more to their world where it's like all right how about we it, modernize it, reminds, it in this way it, it's kind of like when uh spider-man on ps4 came out and all the people were like hounding sony to release uh the sam raimi spider-man suit as a dlc and it got to the point where they started harassing uh insomniac mm -hmm. to do it and then, like, in December, Insomniac tweeted, uh, as a special Christmas gift, here's the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit. And everyone's like, yes, bullying works. And like, yeah, and it's like, like, it's no, like no, do you know how no, long this probably, stuff takes? <laughs> like, yeah, they were like, developing that since the game came out. So, yeah. Much I wouldn't like, be surprised if stuff like that delays their plans to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, if they're, so, if they're like, you know what, fuck these guys. <laughs> like, yeah. So I'm pretty sure, like, this has been in development for, you know, two, three years at this point. You know, it just so happens they're announcing it after you've all bitched and moaned and complained about <laughs> wanting Breath of the Wild, but with Pokemon. Yeah, and I want it on the record. I've been bitching about Pokemon since freaking 2014. <laughs> yeah. <So> <laughs> but you got to be reasonable about it. Damn, like... You can't, you can't, I, I think it's crazy that people were like, all right, we had 20 years of, of 240p video games on our hell and hell, handheld video game consoles. Now the first 1080p game ever, I wanted to be Breath of the Wild in scope. Like what? <laughs> no developer ever has made that transition and made it seamlessly at that. <laughs> like that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so we got three things we got pokemon Sap, we got brilliant diamond and shining pearl and we got legends arceus and i think uh i'm going to play all of them but two out of three are cool <laughs> to me <laughs> um legends i'm most excited for but that's not coming out till 2022 apparently yes. yeah but early 2022 maybe it's breath of the wild maybe it comes out march 3rd and that leaves room <laughs> for something later that year for for another pokemon game maybe um or dlc for legends maybe or dlc freaking yeah see what i want my my dream <laughs> is that they they break this out into like another sub series sort of thing so like um which i think can prolong the their development cycle for like the mainline mainline games so if they have the pokemon games that are currently like the rpgs the whole shebang multiplayer single player all that stuff and then the stop that gap game is this 
where it's like, okay, but here's a new idea for where we're trying to think for just the single player focused stuff and like visuals and like getting our order, uh, our ducks in a row uh, with models and all that stuff. And then they do remakes and then they do the full game again, rinse and repeat. And they can even hand off all the different games to different companies in the, in the pipeline. Yeah. Uh, so that it, you know, it uh, divvies the load better. It's not just all game free working on everything. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, we got notifications here. We got Kate McCat with the hundred bits. Choo choo. Mo Sucra. Excuse me. <laughs> we got Travel with gifting five subs to a million different people. Thank you very much, Travel. I appreciate it. That's a lot of subs. I'm not gonna read all those because we don't got time for that. But thank you. Uh, we got Proud Prince with nine months. The the game looks good, but the names kind of suck. LOL. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is not great. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's yeah, like a, it's I like mean, a soap. It, it goes with the <laughs> motif, but I don't really know what else they could have called it. I think people were thinking they were going to do like something playing into the theme of the game, uh, where it's like. Uh, temporal diamond and uh spatial pearl like so like right. uh palkia is all about like space and not like space like outer space but like the concept of like dimensional space you know right. <laughs> and dialogue is like time so they thought that they were going to like play into that rather than ooh shinier diamonds <laughs> you know like like that that it's got to be different names for different types of diamonds right I mean, there's blood diamonds, but those are illegal. No, you can't. You can't call it that. You can't call Pokemon game that's that. The, that's for the gritty reboot, dude. Yeah. Oh, they actually call them, like, flawless, internally flawless. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> that sucks. Yeah, no. That, you know what? They might have just Googled what I just Googled, and we're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Emeralds. Emerald would have been good. Emerald diamond and... Uh, it's well, already a Pokemon game. <laughs> oh, well, they, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why it sounds like a good name. Yeah. Princess Cut? No, the, you're, there's no good there's Yeah, no maybe good that. that <laughs> Yo, you know how mad people would have been? You know how uh, that would have, like, made them feel validated in their anger? Because it's like, yeah. it's literally called Princess Diamond. Look how stupid this game would have like. <laughs> This is a baby game for babies. <laughs> there was nothing good they could have done out of that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, Pika Pika with uh six months. The bearded trio of awesome of awesomeness have appeared. Thank you, Pika Pika. Yep. Uh, student shoe with twenty four months. Thank you. And above heavens with two months. Hi. 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 That wasn't the only big that announcement last week or, nope. or a big presentation i should say there was another big presentation it was sony was it big was it truly it really, uh, they tried to make it big but it wasn't <laughs> at all. they definitely tried um but yeah sony had their state of play which is basically uh the kmart version of direct the, <laughs> direct. the, the, the woods beat them up uh to bob's nintendo direct as it were. Damn. Uh, I'm just saying saying what the chat said. I'm just saying what the chat said. You Um, didn't disagree. (laughs) You didn't do that either. (laughs) So uh, we'll just run through the games. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 4 is getting a PS5 upgrade. It'll have uh, 4K resolution, 60 frames a second. DualSense adaptive trigger functionality. Uh, It's the only game on... Like in the state of in the state of play that mentioned it's gonna use the PS5's activity cards. That's like those that feature in system where like if you're tracking like a, a trophy or a challenge you're trying to do, the activity cards will save to your profile and show you your progress and like help you out in trying to reach that goal. Right. So that's cool. Um the upgrade will be free and uh your saves will carry over. Nice. Yes. Never played this game. Probably never yeah. going to play this. Game. Uh, don't don't plan on it. Uh, we got new footage of House Mark's upcoming roguelike Returnal. Uh, 
look nice. Uh, every time you die, the entire world gets uh, rearranged. So that'll be annoying. I like how like smart, life, dude. <laughs> I only ever played Resogun, but I really liked Resogun. Resogun was good. This had a, like a very Resogun vibe because like a lot of the monsters uh, will shoot at you and projectiles look like they come from Resogun. <laughs> um, this looks really freaking cool. Yeah. Their, their, uh, their whole thing is like particle effects. Yeah. 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 I mean, it looks beautiful. Uh, the next game was Sifu, which this looks really this cool. This looks freaking it, cool. It's a, it's a 3D brawler in the style of like old Kung Fu movies. And the gimmick is every time you die, your character physically gets older. Oh, Don't I you? didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, so, like you, you retain all of like like your skills and stuff from you know your previous life, but your character actually ages every time you die. You're gonna be sold so, by the end. Oh my god, yeah! By the time I get to the final boss, it'll be like two hundred. <laughs> uh, so that looks cool. Uh, we got more. We got actual information on Knockout City, that weird game from the Nintendo Direct that we really couldn't figure out what it was. Yeah, like what is this? Uh, it is basically uh, dodgeball. Mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. it's like a, a Fortnite and Overwatch, but instead of shooting, it's dodgeball. It it doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't. I think look I saw like... TK Breezy, Bob. You know, you know TK Breezy. It's, yes, I saw him playing this game. I saw a yeah. clip of him playing it because uh, there was a beta on PC. I think they're doing a beta on PlayStation Two, Pl not PlayStation Two, obviously, but also. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I, doesn't look like a game I'm going to necessarily be playing. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't look uh it doesn't look good. Yeah. It looks like another like free to play, like uh you know, battle royale cash in situation. Yeah. 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 But it's dodgeball instead of shooting. So Try to get I don't know kids if that's to get their mom's credit cards out for some I'm skins sure and that'll stuff. like change up the gameplay a little bit, but I don't know if it's gonna be necessarily anything that'll keep people interested for the long run. I saw like there's like sort of combo sort of situations where it's like because it takes you got to hit them twice with the ball. So like yeah. in TK Breezy's video specifically, he like jumped up through the ball. The ball bounced back to him. He threw it off the wall and it hit the guy behind his head. <laughs> so it's like, like that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but that will be something that like I'll like I'll be like, oh, this is free. I'll check this out. I'll play it once. But like, oh, that was sick. Never touch it again. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> like it would be like at best case scenario, it would be that. <laughs> Uh, it was reminding me of Ninjala. Played yeah, that for two very seconds. Similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next is Solar Ash from the makers of Hyperlight Drifter. I am excited for this. I really liked Solar uh, Ash. I mean, I really liked Hyperlight Drifter. Yeah. I will play this. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a 3D action platformer. Uh, there's a lot of uh, exploration and like wall climbing and stuff. Uh, <laughs> With sprawling environments and domineering beasts, Solar Ash is evocative of many games, including Breath of the Wild. <laughs> God damn it. So there you go. The Breath of the Wild with the play for the PlayStation so, crowd. So, so they're, not, they're not allowed to say that in this yeah. presentation. C and D them. It, right this now. is a CBR's <laughs> words, not mine. Hyperlight Drifter. Oh, I don't... Hyperlight Drifter was very much like a uh, 2D like or, the past or Yeah, a, a top down yeah. Zelda game. Uh mm -hmm. it was very good. Uh, the combat was good and everything. Um, this I, I'm not surprised that they're doing a sort of like a like 3D style Zelda game, but the combat's a lot faster, at least in the yeah. first Hyperlight Drifter, and this seems pretty much the same. It looks like she's almost on roller skates. Yeah, um, they they said it's just, she sort of like skates through the world and stuff. I don't know. I didn't really get like a Zelda vibe from it because a lot of the environments they showed weren't really open necessarily but i sort of see what they're saying yeah it doesn't really feel like breath of the wild it's giving me more like i don't even because of the movement i don't want to say wind waker but like if they're going for zelda the closest analogy i could think of is is wind waker here. yeah i think it's going to feel a lot like a uh 3d platforming like gamecube game or something and i'm um, mm. i'm down for that it, but the the combat is probably going to be fast-paced um yeah so that'll be cool i'm down for this i'll check it out i'll check it out in, in like the original Next. hyperlight driven you were like dashing around when you were like fighting and it was yeah. freaking awesome yeah. so you'll probably do that here too 
Uh, next was Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach gameplay reveal, aka Yo. Five Nights at Freddy's an actual game. <laughs> Daniel's game of the year. <laughs> Favorite game. <laughs> is it his game of the year or is it just because he has to make I mean, it's going to have to be <laughs> for the content. He yeah. hates these stupid games, but uh, he has he to does. do it for the content. <laughs> yeah, that's what, I, that's what I thought. Um, Yeah, no, this one actually looks like a game rather than just a, a really scary slideshow presentation. Is it scary? I don't. I I, I still push back on the Five Nights at Freddy's being scary. I mean, you don't you don't Look at think them. it is, but like when you, when you sit there, <laughs> it's cheap jump like, scares. It's, it's, yeah, I think the scary like the scary part is the jump scares. Nothing the about the scares, atmosphere but, of this game. But the scary. thing is, like, like you know, I, you know the jump scares are coming, and it, it fills you with such anxiety that you you try to do everything you can to like not make the jump scares happen, but they do I think anyway. That like if I play this game, if I play this game or not this game i, I guess this one's going to be different because you're walking or whatever yeah. the thing yeah. that would get the jump out of me would be no different of if like if i was playing it not looking at the screen and just heard it in the background Th like just the sound of the jump scare is the scary part nothing on the screen was scary. like if anything the yeah like the thing that's on the screen will take me out of being scared i'm like dude yeah. this is it's chuck e cheese <laughs> i'm not scared anymore <laughs> i'm like See, right. see but, it has the like opposite said, like, effect on me because if I know it's coming, I'm, I could just tune it out. Be like, all right, here it comes. It's happening. Any minute now. All right, there it is. <laughs> the the yeah. problem is, like, for me at least, you know, when I played it, like, I knew it was coming, but I didn't know when. So I spend the entire time trying to, like, you know, close the gates, do all of, like, the power stuff. And I, I think I do everything right. And then all of a sudden, there's Freddy right there screaming in my face. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like these games. Uh, they give me too much stress. Um, this looks like a game I would actually play, but probably not because it still looks like it's going to give me a lot of stress. <laughs> it looks like uh, it, it, it. This is another. It, it looks like it's going to probably be a little jank, just like the original games were. Like kind of yeah. like a like I don't know, like like one environment, and there was like kind of like just JPEGs pasted on a background. Um, yeah. This looks like it's going to probably be a little jank. I mean, uh, the closest thing I can personally compare it to is Alien Isolation. But at least in that game, like you had some modicum of defense. You can like use a flamethrower or a cattle prod or a gun at a certain point. This doesn't look like it has any sort of defense for you. And that throws like puts me off completely because just because you're a horror game does not mean you should feel defenseless in any way. Yeah, you know? that just that that's a red flag to me. That just tells me that they couldn't think of a way to yeah. to make it like scary and suspenseful and and feel like there's like stakes almost yeah. uh, without taking your defenses away. Yeah, I, I'd imagine that there's like environmental stuff, like there's little puzzles where you have to do to to keep them away or something, or like there's doors you can close to keep them away, like in yeah. the original game. Um, from the tr from the trailer, it looks like seeing them is not automatic game over you can run away from them and like it's not game over until they actually like catch you i think that i'm not playing this game unless they let me push small children in the way so it's yeah. like you're not to take them first yeah. <laughs> i think that there's almost nothing done with this game I, I think that there's a lot of work to do and this entire thing is like uh like an on rails like pre-generated like trailer I don't think, I don't think this is a playable thing. Oh, well, this it's, says in 2021. Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to come out this year, so we'll see. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think it. I don't think it's going to be you big. In the delay. I don't think it. It, it, it might, it might get delayed, but I don't think it's going to be a big game at all. I think that they're going to yeah. do yeah. most of the work from now on. Um. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't, because look at the way it moves and everything. It's moving like it's on rails. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So even the camera movement and everything, I'm I'm sus. I'm sus with this game. Um, uh, next is uh, Odd World Soulstorm, uh, which I hate launch. this game. I hate <laughs> it because I read the little flavor text that they got, <laughs> and it says 2.9D. I'm off of this game. I'm not playing it. Ew. I refuse. <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> According <laughs> to. Uh, creator Lauren Lanning 2.90 adds depth and scale to 
whatever. This is HD 2D bullshit, and I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Um, the Odd World games of they. Were, I was always told that they're great games by the gaming media, but every time I play <laughs> them, I'm just like, whatever. Like this, this is not interesting to me. Like Stranger's Wrath was like a critical darling when it came out, and then I played it, and I'm like, this is not not great, son. <laughs> um. This looks like it's more along the lines of like the older, like the original Odd World games, like uh, Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus on the original PlayStation. Um, the most interesting about this is that at launch, the PS5 version will be a PS Plus game. Ooh, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, so you basically, if you're subscribed to PS Plus, you get you get yourself a, a demo. Um, and it's the whole game. <laughs> I'm not fucking playing this game. Fuck this game. <laughs> I mean, I'm down for 2D stuff, but I don't know if this is like my kind of 2D. I'm it's like, not 2D. It's 2.9. Um, so, so. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like it's not. It's a platformer, but it's also got like a lot of like weird stuff in it. Yeah. It's yeah. like also got lemmings mixed into it. There's like items, and yeah, you you control like a bunch of other. They uh, mentioned in the trailer characters. that like they've added like looting and crafting to it. Yeah, so basically what they that. did was they turned Oddworld into every single fucking game mm-hmm. in the 21st century because every <laughs> is looting and crafting in it now. I see that the camera moves around a lot and, you know, it gets close up and gets further back and you can like kind of move it like you can kind of rotate it left or right. So it is kind of like a. Uh, nice is stupid i hate it it's a dumb it is word. it is 3d but it's a it's a side scroller they should have just called it a 3d side scroller because that's what it is yes yeah. all, right. all right uh next is uh kenya bridge of spirits it's um, kina i saw somebody kina? raging about this exact thing so okay so the reason time. why what i don't know what it's it? called is because I've seen I've I watched this uh, state of play twice uh, Mm -hmm. once when it when it first came out and I actually watched it earlier today Um, and both times I zoned out during this. How dare you? I just just lost me. There's a lot reminding me of that. It keeps reminding me of that Disney movie that's coming out, Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, true. (laughs) So I just keep thinking it's that. This is. There was a lot in this uh, state of play that we knew about already, and, and yes. none of this was very exciting. We got more information, but it wasn't really exciting information or anything that we really cared about. Yeah. I think because I was like, I caught this very like I I was watching during it, but I caught it halfway through, and I'm obviously I made the joke of like I'm watching Sony's Nintendo Direct. <laughs> what did yeah. I miss? Um, and then this game was there and I was like, oh, I'm like, actually, like, obviously we knew about this game and I was like, I'm actually down for this game. I don't know when it's coming out. And then they said August and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Cause I was like debating if I was going to, cause it's coming out on PlayStation 4. And I was like, do I want to just like bite the bullet and play it on PlayStation 4? Or do I want to wait until I get a PlayStation 5? Cause I'm getting a PlayStation 5 when Ratchet comes out. This comes out after Ratchet. So I guess I'm playing this on PlayStation 5. <laughs> um, I mean, it looks pretty. It looks cool. It looks like a freaking Pixar yeah. movie or something. Um, yeah, it looks like it looks like another Zelda wannabe. Yeah, yeah, or that's Pixar. that's what's making me not really uh, interested because it's just yeah. It's... But that's why I'm down as long as it's not like awkward at times, Zelda, where I got to talk to everybody and be like, "Hey, where do I got to go?" Okay, yeah. cool. I can go there now. Bet <laughs> I'll, I'm on my way. <laughs> I mean, this looks like a very good game. I'm not trying to knock it. It yeah, looks I'm sure, freaking I'm awesome. Sure I'm sure it'll be a good game. Just both times i saw the state of play i just i zoned out completely and i kept thinking of the disney movie i gotta be honest i haven't my ps5 is like collecting dust like i haven't touched it since dark souls yeah so it's funny because i just read an article on kotaku where the writer said the exact same thing like he's because everybody xbox because they they were sold on the whole idea of like exclusives but then they forgot that sony takes years (laughs) to come out with their exclusives so it's like "Eh, that's why i waited i was like no i'm not getting that until there's like at least two games that i give a fuck about (laughs) on this console yeah i i i very much prefer my xbox just because it's easier it instantly mm-hmm. turns on. I get I freaking Call of Duty just works. It doesn't work on my PlayStation Five. Just doesn't. <laughs> just don't. Just don't work. So why would I, so forget it. I got another thing. I'll play it on the other thing. Yeah. Anyway, we got Death Loop, uh, which we've seen a billion Death times Loop. already. 
So uh, I the don't know. Xbox what... publish PlayStation exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Sony does like a, a PS5 like state of play or whatever, they always show Deathloop. They've showed it so much. I don't know what was new this time that they added to this trailer. Yeah, I don't know either. The only thing that was, the only thing that was really new was that kick-ass theme song that played. I didn't really. I wasn't paying that. Uh, you know what? You know what it was? I watched this through Scootish's uh, live stream. Like he was reacting oh, yeah, to yeah. it. You didn't, it. I know you weren't hearing fucking no. anything. He was talking <laughs> to his roommate about what this game is, and he explained it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he said that you play the level and then you die and then you have to replay the level again as the female character. That's what he said. And he said it with oh, such man. confidence no. like that is how it is. You mean like when he was like, this isn't Final Fantasy 16. I know for a fact this isn't Final Fantasy 16. Final Fantasy 16. Oh, shit. <laughs> Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> for the record, it's, it's, a, it's a single player game. That you that you play through, but at the same time there is a, a an online other person multiplayer that is hunting you down. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, um, it, it's 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 player versus environment versus player. Yeah. Uh, That's gonna be sick for multi streams, dude. It's gonna be cool. <laughs> I'm trailer, very interested in this. This seems pretty cool. Yeah. This trailer does did show off like you do get some abilities similar to Arcane's other. A uh, game decided where like you can turn invisible and like to help sneak past certain things and whatnot. Um, so there's that. But the only thing I really took away from it was the the song was very good, it was very yeah. James Bondy, which I yeah. like. Um, I'm I'm very interested in this. I only played a little bit of Dishonored, but I like what I played of it. Um, yeah, and Dishonored, uh, the first one at least is very good. I'm a fan of movement shooters like this, and I like the idea of uh, having to. Uh, of being hunted while you're just trying to play like a like a like a normal you know linear game. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I'm apparently, down. it's uh, coming to PS5 under a one-year console exclusivity deal. Yes. Yep. I knew it was something like that. that. I, I didn't. I did not know that. I did. I That's honestly true. forgot that it was a PlayStation Five exclusive until you said yeah. it. Yeah, I remember that because I remember Phil Spencer talking about how they were going to honor it, even though, I mean, they technically don't have to. <laughs> well, like, I mean, they honored, honor. they honored, you know, Minecraft being on everything. True, but so. like honoring an exclusivity deal Minecraft. for like yeah. somebody else platform is wild. Like it, being on more than one platform, that tracks for them because they, they do that anyway. Yeah. Um, but for them to be like, ah, it's fine. We'll let you have our game for a year. <laughs> like, that's so weird. <laughs> All right. The last thing and is lastly, Final Fantasy Seven nonsense. Fine. All right. So I'm switching over to the Polygon article because it's strictly about this. And this was the big. This was the big announcement of the whole state of play. Final yeah, Fantasy Seven remake. Through the whole thing. Yeah. Final mm -hmm. Fantasy Seven remake is coming to PlayStation Five alongside an updated version called Final Fantasy Seven Remake Int uh, Integrate. The update release will add new content and new visual elements. Shown during Thursday's State of Play stream, Integrade adds new story content to the first game in Square Enix's multi-part Final Fantasy VII Remake. The PS5 version has all the technical and graphical improvements one would expect from the upgrade, like decreased load times and better visual effects, but Integrade adds a new part to the story featuring Yuffie, a character we don't normally see in the story until after the gang leaves Midgard. Yuffie, dressed in an adorable Moogle robe with a male character by her side, is in Midgar, uh, ready to do her own, ready to go on her own adventure. You'll be able to play as both Yuffie and Sona, uh, Sonon. These people have stupid names. Uh, as <laughs> yeah, they I develop their own <laughs> uh, scheme to infiltrate uh, Shinra to their to find rare material. Actually, no, I do. I think I do know. I think Yuffie is the girl's name. Is I think that Yuffie? one. Yeah, I think it's Yuffie. Correct me if I'm Yuffie. wrong. Jay. Where where is I it? Think it's Yuffie. Yuffie. That looks like Yeah, Yuffie. it is. Will it's Yuffie. Yep. It's Yuffie. That looks yep. like Yuffie. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yuffie will very likely be in the next part of the Final Fantasy 7 remake and this add-on will let us know what she's been doing in the background. 
the game will also include a photo mode, uh, allowing players to pause and take stunning screenshots of the various characters. As shown in the trailer, you can even take screenshots during battles, which means that if you're like me, the writer of this article, the Reno fight is now just a photo shoot. Uh, there will also be a new difficulty mode added to the game, allowing players to use the classic turn-based controls while playing on normal mode. Uh, before, you had to play the game on easy to access classic controls. That's odd. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate will release for release on June 10th for $70. Uh, those who bought the PlayStation 4 version of Final Fantasy VII Remake will be able to upgrade to the PS5 version for free, but will still have to pay a separate cost to get Integrade. Note that Integrade is not available for the PlayStation 4, so PS4 users will not be able to play the Eufy DLC. We don't know what this means for PS5 owners, who only played Final Fantasy VII Remake as part of the PlayStation Plus collection and whether they'll also get access to Integrate. Right now, we don't Wait, have... this is on the PlayStation Plus collection too? The, the PlayStation Plus thing is stupid. They should have never added to it. <laughs> like, the, the, that's dumb. I didn't even know that this was a part of the PlayStation Plus co collection. Per a email from Square Enix. This is from Square Enix. Right now, we don't have any information on PS Plus upgrades outside of what's been announced. Additionally, we don't have any information about standalone cost for the new episode featuring Yuffie at this time. Dumb. So that's what we were trying to get at before, where you have the PlayStation Plus version of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Okay, great. But there's no indication on whether or not that version will be eligible for to upgrade to the PS5 version or once you do upgrade if you'll be able if you can upgrade are you able to get the integrate DLC sorry I was just looking at I was just looking at something sorry <laughs> um all I know is she got a big ass shuriken and that's dope you know, I was looking at this <laughs> and like know. the Final Fantasy 7 art from the original game is always awesome except mm. this what's going on here <laughs> That has to be fake. <laughs> this is it. No, I, I don't know. I guess she's got like an armored arm or something. That's weird. That's a weird looking thing. <laughs> but anyway, I don't think that the uh, the PlayStation 5 version, like, yeah, it's it's an upgrade, but like people were really going nuts about how much different it looks. And I think the PlayStation 4 version already looked really good. You know, I don't I, I don't see that much of a difference between the two versions. No, Honestly. there's like some lighting effects and like that's it. Yeah, it's shinier, really... dude. I just think it's dumb that they're like hard walling people out of the con like the option to get the content unless they buy the game all over again, even though they got the bait and switch of like you got the game for free, dude. Yeah, JK, that, like they, they need to like clarify like that <laughs> and like really let people know like what the deal is if you if you only have the PlayStation Plus version of the game, are you shut out? from the PS5 version uh, and therefore uh, the integrate DLC or are they going to let you, you know, upgrade to it? Are, and are they even going to tell you how much the integrate DLC is going to cost on its own? Cause so far they haven't. What if this is also $70? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. They're very, they've, so Sony has been bad at, at upgrade situations. Uh, to the PlayStation 5 and Square has been bad at um, doing at, at this game in particular <laughs> they've been bad at yeah. like like telling people how many parts is it going to be um, uh, how much of the game is going to be in this is there going to be a lot more added content or is it just going to be like the first half of the game um, and now here we are with uh, this whole situation um I'm glad it's being upgraded for the PlayStation 5. If you haven't played it yet, just get the PlayStation 5 version. It's good for you. You know, you'll just straight up get the the the, the best version. Uh, no, you'll get the full experience, yeah. But for those of you who already own, you know, FF7 Remake, you 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 might have to wind up buying the game again. Um, I have this game for PlayStation 4. Uh, still probably never gonna play it. 
same <laughs> played the demos it was good i enjoyed it i just you know there's too many things to play and this game just is a time yeah. suck let's see okay maybe i got i gotta see how long until like how long to get to to yuffie because i want to like fucking throw the big ass shuriken and then i'll have enough <laughs> but okay i had my fill <laughs> uh the remake uh is 34 hours main plus extra 42 and a half hours yeah, and nah, if I gotta beat that. The I'm main game, it. the actual first one for the PlayStation, uh, main plus extra is fifty-one and a half hours for the whole game. This is just a part of the game. Yeah. Wow. Uh. So what do I gotta do? I got the PlayStation Four version. I want to play the PlayStation Five version. What do I gotta do? You're good. Uh, I think You're fine. You You're put- good. You, you put, put your you disc, put the in, disc in the PS5, and you will get um, the PS5 upgraded version. Will yeah, it allegedly, automatically? But maybe do it will do the Warzone thing. Yeah, yeah. No, maybe I don't do the Warzone. That, that you have to check. They didn't specify. What do I even do about the Warzone thing? Like, I just can't play just my play Modern your, your Warfare Xbox. that I bought. Like, uh, well, just... but what if I didn't have an Xbox? Like, what am I supposed? Am I supposed to call Sony? You buy and be like, an hey, Xbox. My shit's <laughs> broken. Did Did you try deleting it and reinstalling it? Uh, 1,000 times I did that, Will. And you know what? It I, works when you delete it and reinstall it. It works one time. And if you close it, it doesn't work anymore. I don't know. Anyway, this whole I state of play know. was... Uh, I, I, we, they really, I was, uh, it happened, allegedly. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't want to say I was disappointed because honestly, I have I low disappointed expectations. Because I, had no, I had no... Yeah, I... Yeah. I never have it, expectations for Sony stuff because they will just uh, they will just announce stuff that has already been announced and pretend like it's yeah. like a cool new thing. Yes, yeah, because they announced stuff five years before it's ready to be out. Right. <laughs> so it's like oh, we don't we don't have content to actually announce because we announced our stuff five years ago. Another so, thing uh, about that I noticed about the state of plays versus the Nintendo Directs, and I hate comparing them to the Nintendo Directs, but Nintendo did it so right the first time that anything anyone who tries to copy it like does a really bad job of living up to those expectations but nintendo does a very good job of explaining the games <laughs> sony yeah, does sometimes not do well sometimes like sometimes <laughs> more, some... more often than not more often than not like the last nintendo direct they yeah. explained most if not all the games like what they are what you're going to be doing in them this for the most part it was just trailer after trailer after trailer right for, for better I, or I worse to, i was just saying i was just saying i think of sinfu was I think sometimes Nintendo, specifically RPGs, I feel like they go too deep. They're like, like if you're if you're like into that sort of thing, it's like this right. is the game and this is yeah, the core no, of I, it. I don't We're done <laughs> on Xenoblade Chronicles. Fair enough, yeah. but you know, I, I get the gist of it. I had to look up what the gameplay gimmick of Sifu was. For, yeah. for, that was for better or worse, and, and Nintendo and is that's... very good at marketing. Yeah, they got yeah. that. They got that down pat. But yeah, then they, mm-hmm. then they do shit like Xenoblade where they talk about it for 20 minutes or, or like yep. f- a Fire Emblem where they're like, look at all these crazy cool menus you get to go through. And it's like, <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm asleep. What was the for one? Me, and maybe maybe it's an RPG thing. I've talked to Parker about this too. So I don't know if it's just me not liking RPGs, but I feel like they spend too like the those aren't the type of games that you should spend that much well, time I, on. I think people... Unless the direct is about that. I think people like, get really excited about that stuff, about the little yeah. intricacies of the RPGs. People get like go like nuts over that stuff. Who are into that stuff, I guess. Um, I, what was the one? Was it Xenoblade where it was like the giant turtle that was talking? Yeah, and it was just no, really was, slow yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. boring. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, they just announced a lot of stuff that they already had talked about. The biggest things that we yeah. didn't know about was Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, which uh, is a big deal to a lot of people, but not to us or, I mean, people Yo, who it's haven't even looked at it. It's going to make so much money, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've never heard of Five Nights at Freddy's before, I don't think this is going to be the one you're going to jump on, right? Like, this isn't... Right. Yeah, for sure. If I didn't know Dan, I wouldn't give a fuck about this game. Right. <laughs> you know, like uh, Crash Bandicoot coming to PlayStation Five is cool. That's a cool thing, but I mean, that's not yeah. that big of a deal. It's a game that's already been out. Um, Returnal's cool, but we knew about it already. Uh, mm-hmm. Sifu's really cool. 
That yeah. was cool. I was excited about that. Knockout City, get out of here. Solar Ash is really mm. cool. I'm more excited for the little stuff than I am about... Uh, I think we knew about Solar Ash, too, though. I think did. that was another game we that did. we already knew about. So yeah. literally, the only thing that we learned about that, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool, is Sifu. And that's Actually, yeah. everything else is... This trailer and is... The Final Fantasy shit. Actually, wait, no. This I don't think this is the right trailer. Yeah, no, this is from June, this trailer that they have on this website. Um... Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they showed a different trailer. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> um, so I guess the biggest thing was Final Fantasy. And uh, yeah. yay. Cool, dude. Yeah. Nice. So that's that. Not 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 a big deal. And I, I mean, Sony's already selling a lot. They don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking of PlayStation and my personal PlayStation problems... Call of Duty not working on my PlayStation 5. The whole reason why I haven't even touched my PlayStation 5 because I've been just playing Call of Duty on my freaking Xbox. Uh, Will, you put this article in here. I think this was... Uh, yeah, a, I think this was over a week ago. Uh, maybe? I don't know. I saw it I Whoops. saw it after last week's Wolfden Live, so I figured put it in put it in the keep to talk about and then there was a, a follow-up article that sort of relates to it uh, that I put immediately after. But we'll start with this. Uh, Activision has said that players with a 500 gigabyte PlayStation 4 may need to make room if they wish to have the fully updated version of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare slash Warzone present on one system. Uh, in a post on the PlayStation, uh, sorry, on a, in a post on the Call of Duty blog, the franchise publisher wrote, those who own a standard PlayStation 4 with a default hard drive of 500 gigabytes may need to make room if they have the full versions of Modern Warfare slash Warzone and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War with all the modes and packs installed. Should you have both games installed and have kept up to date with the updates, you may need to delete some unused game content to have a successful download and install of the latest Warzone patch. It's common knowledge that Activision's latest Call of Duty games take up swaths of storage, but it seems that they may be stretched beyond the capacity of a base PS4 as they receive more updates. It may be that without compression, external storage may become the only way to have the full Call of Duty package on one console for some players. The blog notes that players can click R3 on the main menu of Black Ops Cold War to uninstall content you may not have played in a while. Um, say the campaign or zombies mode, for example. Uh, the same can be achieved in Modern Warfare or Warzone by heading to the General tab in the Options menu and then clicking the Games Install option. Of course, you don't need to download War. Of course, you don't need to download the Warzone Season Two update if you only plan to play Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This news arrives ahead of the launch of Season 2, which brings with it a new Zombies mode called Outbreak, new operators, weapons, and maps. Zombies also appear to be headed to Warzone if recent leaks are to be believed. Um, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, so I want to make it clear that this is three games that they're talking about. It, 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 right. it, it's, it sounds... A lot. I mean, it's still pretty bad, but it sounds a lot worse because all of the articles that I saw about it were talking about it as if it's one game because it is really confusing because you have Warzone and it's integrated with Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War. So right. th there are people, myself included, who have all three games. The problem with me is I got Modern Warfare on PlayStation and I got Cold War on Xbox. <laughs> um, so the reason why all three games are important is well so i mostly play warzone and warzone takes up freaking 200 gigabytes it's massive it sucks it's part of the reason why i play on xbox is because my playstation 4 was an original 500 gigabyte and it took up the whole thing and i couldn't play any other games so i uh stopped playing it on my ps4 um the reason why you might need the other two games is because there's certain weapons that are pulled from those two games there's modern warfare weapons and there's cold war weapons and um if you want to level those weapons up, it's easier to do it in the multiplayer for Cold War or Modern Warfare. And every time they have an update, 
the weapons get better or worse so you have to change the weapons that you use every so often so you might want to pop into the actual multiplayer for a few rounds to level up the gun from that game so there are a lot of people who have all three games installed with all of the updates uh this is a problem for them i even if you have a terabyte console like the xbox series x it's not cool 500 gigabytes is way too much for two for one game yes <laughs> yeah. way too much yeah. yes I, and yes. the thing the thing is because like most people only have a 500 gigabyte playstation 4 and you know i upgraded my internal hard drive uh for my playstation 4 but like you didn't Right. And I'm pretty sure most people haven't. So I have 500 gigabyte PlayStation 4, and I'm not upgrading it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I don't think you know th this is a very serious problem for a large number of people. And Activision's solution is delete stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they so, almost seem proud of it, though. It's weird. Like yeah. they're, they're like. Our game will get your other games. This Isn't that great? This will be the only <laughs> game you will be allowed to play on your PlayStation 4. It's basically it, it's it's not cool. Like like Activision no. should be actively trying to fix this. Like it's not it's not normal. Like there there's yeah. the people defending it because assets take up a lot of room, and I understand that, especially if you want some 4K assets, it takes up a lot of room. But yeah. there are ways to compress it. There's plenty of other games exactly. that look a lot better than Call of Duty because Call of Duty doesn't look that great. There's games yeah. that look a Especially lot Warzone. better. Warzone specifically. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There's a lot of games the that that and yeah, Warzone itself is 200 gigabytes, and and or it has there's, been. They've made it smaller, but not by much. There's much bigger and much prettier games out there that are a fraction of the size yeah. there's no re the reason why it is so many gigabytes is because of negligence on the developer's side yeah, yeah it's because uh, they they took no effort to compress their game at all right <laughs> like, right yeah and it and was a very low like, priority for them yeah, and especially like compared to like Nintendo, which I see people in the chat comparing them is like they prioritize compression so much. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah, even even with the fact that like their games obviously they don't have as high quality assets, their games are a lot smaller than you would expect them to be. Um, yeah, more often than freaking not. Mario Odyssey is insanely massive, and that game is like I it's think like it's five like, gigs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Friggin also, also they Nintendo really cares because they know that you only have 32 gigabytes on your Switch. And, and they want yeah. you to be able to play a couple of games without having to purchase an additional micro SD card, um, which right. is which is really good. Even but though, like, you can get a decent one for 12 bucks. <laughs> you know, active, like... Yo, know, Odyssey is 5.6 gigabytes. Yeah. Th yeah. That... that there, uh, I would have expected 12, you know? I would have expected yeah. over 10 gigabytes for that game. I feel like most like high profile 360 games when they went digital are bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's yeah. It's crazy. Uh, at the end of the article, they post a, they uh, make mention of the fact that Epic minimize, uh, shrunk down the size of Fortnite down from 99 gigs to 29 gigs. That's a 60 gig yeah. decrease. Yeah. I, I think for that Fortnite. Activision doesn't care because they're not a, a platform holder. You know, they're they're not like a they they don't need to care. They they're not trying to sell PlayStation fives. They're trying to they're they're, they're selling their game. You know, right? Yeah. Um, so they don't care if you need to get an additional hard drive. Um, if anything, they're like, ah, we'll leave you twenty more gigs so you can install Crash Four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's our other game that we released this year. Like, they're they're yeah. doing very minimal work to try to make it easier for people to 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 get their game. And they know that people are going to get it anyway. They know people are going to buy that hard drive. I mean, back in the Xbox 360 days, people used to come to GameStop to buy those little hard drives you slot on to the top of the Xbox. And people yeah. would just go, people would just throw those out when they were done with them. People would go through those like mm. crazy. Um, and that was to download the uh, expansion packs for Call of Duty at, at the time. Um, I'll, I downloaded uh, Valorant the other day. I still haven't really played it. I played like the t t tutorial and that's it. But I barely have any space on my computer because uh, I didn't really prioritize the Windows partition on this computer because I didn't. It's really just for streaming. Um, 
so I downloaded Valorant and I was scared that I wasn't going to have any room because I've been thinking about Call of Duty. Valorant's 12 gigabytes. Like, come on, dude. Like, why yeah. is Valorant only 12 gigabytes? Mm -hmm. And I know that it's like a, it's like a, 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 a much simpler looking game, but it's still a pretty graphically yeah. intensive game, you know? There's no reason that uh, that that Warzone yeah. needs to be 200 gigabytes. I get the campaign for Call of Duty being being big because there's a lot going on there. Yeah, even I feel like that, the cutscenes are. I feel that, like the no, cutscenes are a lot of the space there. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I I disagree. Even that like doesn't have to be. No, I don't think that anywhere. it has to be. But I no, think that cause... that is probably the case. Like they probably just have straight up like raw 4K video files where it's like, okay, that's the cutscene. <laughs> no <laughs> effort to compress it. They do stuff like that in in the Warzone updates. Like the the last one had this weird cutscene where um where you look you they added a boat to Warzone. The new update has this weird cutscene where you see the boat for like a minute and it's just different shots <laughs> of the boat and it played every single time you booted into a you loaded into a game it was this bad minute long cutscene um anyway uh yeah i was trying to see if anybody in the chat even cared or uh or even tried to defend it but it doesn't look like it uh activision yeah. games are also pump and chug optimization optimization plus polygons count affect it optimization Plus polygon count affected. No, yeah, polygon count definitely affects it. But again, there's plenty of other games that have that are much prettier looking. It, it. I would say Activision yeah. could could fix it. But like you said, uh, what end? Whatever. You need, what yeah. end? Vogel. What, like you said, Activision is pumping, pumping chug. That's what he said. The way I'm thinking about it is Activision makes the game and then they stop caring about it in there. It's on to the next. Yeah, game. they're like. Game's done. COD yeah. number 37. Optimizations <laughs> are minimal. But to their credit, they have optimized Warzone a lot. They've done a lot to Warzone. They've been really good at keeping up with it. And that's Raven Software is doing all of that. Um, but uh, yeah, they haven't... I mean, they, they really care very little about... about uh, uh, Freaking... Uh, making it smaller. Pump and chug is slang for doing dirty things where where I'm from. R read that very differently. I mean, I mean, he's, what end Vogel is trying to fuck Warzone is what he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, th I thought pump and dump. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like you put all the work that's... into it and then you get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a stock thing. Uh, well, on the subject of Sony consoles and storage space, uh, the PlayStation 5, one of their big selling features was that you can put in your own NVMe uh, solid straight state drive into it. Um, and they never activated that feature. However, uh, the PlayStation 5 will support internal storage upgrades beginning this summer. Bloomberg reported on Friday, which should come as a welcome news to players coping with AAA games ballooning file sizes and storage <laughs> demands. Bloomberg cited unnamed sources who have been who have been briefed on Sony's plans. It's an important step because in external storage on the PS5 can only be used for PS4 games. PS5 games must go on the console's new internal drive. About 667 gigabytes of it is actually available to store games, apps, captures, and other content. Bloomberg said that after the firmware update, players can simply remove the cover of the PS5 and install a new drive compatible with the console's hardware, of course. Uh, a Sony spokesperson told Bloomberg that the company has been working to enable M.2 SSD storage expansion for the PlayStation 5, but had no further details to share. Uh, the Xbox Series X has a one terabyte internal solid state drive. The PlayStation 5's, the PlayStation 5 is a custom uh, 825 gigabyte solid state drive. The Series X and Series S uh, owners cannot upgrade their internal storage, but they have more options than a PS5 owner does. An, ex an external USB 1.3 Drive can be used to play Xbox One and older games on a Series X, and Xbox One games that have been optimized for Series X may be installed, may be installed to and run from the external drive. But native Series X games can only run from the internal SSD 
they may be moved over to the inoperable cold storage on the external drive to free up space. There's also an external SSD memory card for the Series X that adds another terabyte of storage um, and fully supports new games, but it's $220. The PlayStation 5 has none of those options. If a game was developed or optimized for the PS5, it must be installed onto the internal SSD. There is no cold storage option either. There is no proprietary external memory card or stick at any price. Bloomberg's report also notes that a firmware update enabling storage expansion will also unlock higher speeds for the PlayStation 5's cooling fan. On the whole, the PS5 has been a quieter machine than the PS4, but evidently better airflow was necessary to keep the unit from getting into overheating trouble. I don't want to keep crapping on PlayStation because I like PlayStation. And I, I think the PS5 is a great console, but um, it's ridiculous that uh, the this this the internal storage <laughs> slot wasn't active at launch, and it's been taking this long to just turn that turn that it slot on. This almost, was like almost as one if of their. They should have delayed it a year. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the big things that they were selling the PS5 on, not just yeah. their custom internal uh, SSD, but the fact that it was going to utilize the most recent type of SSD storage device, the M.2 NVMe style drives. And you can pick anyone off the shelf. You can just plug into your PS5 and you can add more storage to it. And that it hasn't been available since launch. That's bad enough. But the fact that you can't plug an external regular ass uh, USB hard drive into your PS5 to use as a storage bay for even your PS4 games is frankly abysmal. I, I think that's well, no, I think you. So they're saying I think this. I think this article is a little misleading because you can plug an external hard drive in and use it for storage for PS4 games. And PS4 I think, games. Yes, and I think that you could even play them off of it. Okay. Yeah, but, PlayStation 4 games, but I think they're specifically yes. talking about PlayStation 5 games. They're saying that yeah. they, they said that you can't use it as cold storage for PlayStation 5 games. Yeah, for PlayStation yeah, 5. Yeah, right, 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 right. Um, I think the most ridiculous part is that they were marketing it as this big deal. And they didn't say until the until it basically launched that that uh dro that that thing wasn't going to work, and and, mm -hmm. and people are buying the console in hopes that eventually it will work. And it's entirely possible. I was thinking this whole time. I was like, it's possible that they just never enable that part. Yeah, <laughs> there's no reason they, they don't have to. They don't have to enable that. There's, I mean, there's, on the bottom of the NES, there's that port that doesn't do anything. On the there's bottom a port of on the Wii U that they never the Wii U, on the bottom of the, the GameCube, on the bottom like, of the Super Nintendo, <laughs> the N64. Yeah, that it's it's possible that they just never do anything with it. Yeah. Um, the Xbox has this big ugly port on the back that you can plug in a a, a one terabyte drive, which I should probably buy. Um, so I I know people like harp on the fact that the that one terabyte drive. The, the memory card for the Xbox Series yeah, X is two, $220 for a terabyte. Yeah. But look up NVMe M.2 exactly. drives. <laughs> It'll cost you roughly the same amount of money for that type of memory stick for your PlayStation 5. It, but literally, the first one I saw on the search results, but this one's two terabytes, is yeah. $430. <laughs> yeah. But at least Microsoft had a solution available at launch. Yeah. yeah, it's entirely possible that by the time PlayStation comes out with their option, the Xbox option will be cheaper yeah. than yeah. standard <laughs> NVMe yeah. drives. I, I don't like the idea of proprietary because, I mean, the the idea is is that um, since it's a generic M.2 drive or whatever, uh, you could uh, eventually you the they will be cheaper. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but. I don't, I mean, Xbox is, isn't that expensive in the grand scheme of things right now. Um, yeah, and Xbox is actively showing, especially in this generation, that they rather lose money on their end than to, like, just so they can get you in the door. Yeah. Like, they're, they're not trying to make a huge profit off of their hardware in any way. 
St storage is going to be a problem with Xbox too because you got all this freaking Game Pass yeah. games you got to download. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's true. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, those get integrated into XCloud. XCloud. Yeah. Yep. There were other things with PlayStation too, like uh, like I do we is fourteen forty p even in, enabled yet? <laughs> I don't think. So. I don't think so. Like what the hell? That's another thing they said. Yeah, we'll do it. Delay this console it's just, a year. <laughs> it's just fourteen forty p. Like like is it really that much to ask for? Like Jesus Christ. And they just straight up said like variable ref uh, variable refresh rate just straight up is probably not going to work on PlayStation Five. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a while it's gonna be a while but uh, you know the xbox came out and it, it doesn't have any problems it just freaking works all the features <laughs> that they said were gonna work works i don't get it there was like a problem with quick resume apparently i didn't experience that problem but some people said that they were having problems with quick resume, i never so maybe that i never even used quick resume i think i did by accident one time but uh, yeah, quick resume is the thing that I do when I'm on my Xbox. I'm like, yo, I can play seven games right now and then turn off my Xbox and not. <laughs> touch the I think like I accidentally resumed uh, the Xbox Live Arcade version of Sonic Adventure 2 when I installed oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it accidentally that. resumed into where I was in City Escape. I think we were talking about that last time I was on this podcast. <laughs> I like to bring it up. It's very important to me that I played Sonic Adventure 2, the Xbox play, Live yeah. Arcade version, on my Xbox Series X. Um, anyway, I listen, I love my PlayStation 5 when I turn it on and play it. Friggin' Demon Souls was great, uh, even though I wanted to put the controller through the freaking wall. Um, but PlayStation 5's got a lot of problems. It's expensive, it's hard Dude, to find, and it's got some weird stuff going PlayStation 5 releases on. for me on June 11th, <laughs> I'm gonna be hyped. You know that release date isn't here yet, so PlayStation Five doesn't exist to me yet. Yeah. I still would recommend a PlayStation Five to people if they don't have anything, because like maybe there's probably more options for them to. I mean, it's the exclusive. It's the idea of the exclusives that will eventually come. <laughs> yeah, but by right. then you can get a PlayStation Five Slim for a hundred bu bucks cheaper, and it'll be True. half the size. <laughs> True. <laughs> like, that's what I'm. That's what I'm waiting for. Xbox no, I don't have is, room for that. If you if you're down for Game Pass, dude, Xbox is the way to go. Hmm. It's true. And also the if you need if, not even need if you want something now if you want the pretty box now I think Xbox is the way to go. And if you're like selling yourself on the idea of exclusives. Wait, <laughs> like wait until the slim comes out. Dude. And the Series S is great. It's a great little console. If you if you want to save yeah, some, some the, bucks, the Series S feels like. A stopgap where it's like you're you're so if that's the position that you're in right and maybe you want something now and you don't care about the highest spec thing buy a series s and then just buy the playstation 5 when there's more exclusive the, the sure. series s is definitely a secondary console yeah yep, yep like yep. if like i would play on a series x but you know my daughter when she's old enough would get the series s you know, mm -hmm. or if I became like a PlayStation guy completely, I'd have a Series S, like so I can play Halo and Gears and things like that. What about people right? who have a Switch and just want to get into Call of Duty? That that too, yeah. Um. Anyway, we got to blast through a couple more topics because it's running okay. out here. Uh, we got Fall Guys is now an epic game. I'm angry about this. Uh yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't like, know what this means. Like uh this I'm I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so Fall Media Guy, Tonic, the creators of for, of uh Fall Guys is now owned by Epic Games. Yeah, this I mean previously they were being published by Devolver Digital, which was great because the marketing was funny as hell and the social media team was great and everything. Um I don't know what I don't know what this means now. Being being owned by Epic. I mean, is it still well, being I don't published? Think that, by... I don't think that stuff is going to change because they have their own in-house marketing. Um, like Oliver, he worked for media or works for Mediatronic. Like okay. Clara or whatever. Like when oh, that's she true. Was she with... worked for them and then she moved to uh, to yeah. It, but no, she worked for Sandbox Strats, who works with a lot of different. Mm developers devolver being one of them okay she would like be there for marketing for certain things but they had their own like their twitter account doesn't have anything to do with devolver outside of the fact that 
Devolver's the publisher, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Devolver's not, like, publish tweets. It's social media people, you know, like, that's media. Trying to tell them to do that. So why do you not like this? I don't like it because Epic's shitty. Like, they're, they're <laughs> not, a, not a company I'm down with right now. Like, it's, fuck Epic. <laughs> uh, how will this affect the game? Your gameplay isn't changing, and neither is our mission to bring Fall Guys to as many players as possible. Each season will continue to expand the game with new content, features, rounds, and costumes. Uh, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout will remain purchase- purchasable on Steam and PlayStation and Switch when it comes out. If you own the game on these platforms, you'll still be able to play it from there and we'll receive future updates. We are also still planning to bring it to Nintendo Switch and Xbox. Fortnite and Rocket League already have tons of features we'd love to bring to Fall Guys. A- account systems, crossplay, squad. Oh, that's good. There you go. They can utilize yeah, the features that, that those that's have because Fall Guys desperately needs help in those situations. It's true. Uh, the, the like the, fucking sell them to Microsoft, Microsoft you buy them <laughs> use the, Microsoft instead the squad system on I mean I haven't played Fall Guys in a while but the squad system desperately needs help yeah how will this affect but the that, community I, I feel like that's part of the reason that you have it because it it's shitty to, yeah to, like in that in that sense we absolutely love our community and we wouldn't be in this situation without your continued support. We'll stay super close with you, continue to chat with you in the same open and honest way and continue to take on all your suggestions and feedback. I hope so. I hope that them having a corporate overlord doesn't change the, how, how like open they were with everything mm-hmm. and how loose they were with their, with their online presence. Uh, why did you choose Epic? We've been mutual fans for a while, and as we've gotten to know the Epic team better, it turns out we have a lot in common and share a lot of the same goals. And then they have a tweet from Tim Sweeney, which is which isn't even it's not even a big deal. We're friends with Tim Sweeney too. Yeah. He liked one of my tweets. <laughs> They really love Fall Guys and our team at Mediatonic will continue to be the same team working on the same game, but we'll now have the full power of Epic Games to help us blah, 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 blah. That's standard acquisition shit. Yeah. I'd hope so, but still fuck Epic. (laughs) Like, (laughs) ultimately, this is good news. I hope that they still stay the same and all that shit, but Epic is like... Kind of gross. Um, I mean, I like the idea that they can utilize some of some of the features from other Epic games, but uh, I yeah. mean, does this mean they're going to develop stuff for Epic? Does this mean that? Um, I mean, Epic. What does this mean? Like, what type of control does Epic have over Mediatonic now? Yeah. Uh. Anyway. Oh, the Noir Bat. Thank you for the Prime subscription. That was thirty-seven minutes ago, and I'm dumb and didn't see it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, all right, real quick. Anthem redesign canceled. Anthem's not getting uh, a new situation. So, dude, if you want me just to summarize it real quick, yeah, Anthem it. was there. They were Bioware and EA were planning this thing called Anthem Next, which is basically going to be a big overhaul of their game Anthem, which launched mediocre reviews and everybody hated it. Um, but they've decided no, uh, they're not going to push out Anthem Next. They're not going to do revamp anthem in any way shape or form um they're basically just they're gonna keep supporting it if there are people playing anthem but for all intents and purposes the game is dead they're gonna shift focus over to mass effect and uh the next dragon age game honestly this is probably good because not a lot of people liked anthem uh i mean there was yeah. a lot of promise with anthem they said they were gonna support it for a really long time but uh I think people are much more interested in uh, Mass Effect, and and let's remember yeah. that Anthem took a lot of uh, took a lot of resources away from Mass Effect Andromeda, and people were mad at it for that. Yeah, um, yeah. So then know, making Dragon like, Quest in a new Mass Effect is probably good news. They they put a lot of stock in Anthem to be like the next big thing. Mm-hmm. They really wanted it to work, and just yeah. nothing about it did. <laughs> this just kind of solidifies like they, that it's a failure. But I mean, that's okay. 
they wanted it to be yeah. like a, a No Man's Sky story. But the difference between them and Hello Games is like No Man's Sky was their thing, you know, and they didn't really have anything else to be like, ah, oh, well, yeah, guess we'll go and do that other thing you guys like. Like, the fuck am I playing from Hello Games? That's not that, right? Joe Danger. Uh, no, I refuse. <laughs> uh, but like, Bioware is like, okay, well, we'll just work on our other fucking IP that people already love and are waiting for, you know? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, next, we got Stadia Blue Millions on Red Dead Redemption Two and other ports. Uh, so, do you want to just summarize this one too? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so basically, um, Google, Google has no idea how video games work. Um, they spent m- millions and millions of dollars giving money to Activision and Take Two to port their games over to Stadia. And, you know, make sure they work on Stadia. Meanwhile, all the game companies that they, they like either acquired or developed to make games exclusive for Stadia, they didn't put any money towards them. And they really didn't have any understanding about how game development worked. And that's why those studios started to close. Uh, basically, we're already looking at the beginning of the end for Stadia. <laughs> well, like, I mean... I- it looks like it's the end. <laughs> like uh, just hard stop. I'd imagine if you're like a corporate guy at Google, you're like, all right, we got this new thing. We want the big IPs on it. Let's do whatever we can to get them on there. And they don't know what yeah. the, you know game business is like. So take twos over there, like, all right, give us, I don't know, I don't know, like forty million. And uh, Google's like, all right, no, I guess that's what I don't it is. Even, I don't right, I think that Google went to them and was thinking like, ah, Netflix throws a billion dollars at a show. <laughs> we can yeah. give them $50 million for a video game. You know, like, I think that that was a thing. And Take Two is like walking into this meeting and they're like, okay, we're here with Google. Uh, let's let's spring for 10 million guys. And then Google's like, how about 45 million? And they're like, Dude, okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Hide, all the, hide all the pitches for 10 million. We want the 40 <laughs> instead. <laughs> yeah, no, that's how, that's, probably what happened um yeah it, it it seems throughout this whole thing uh someone at google just didn't know how to handle this whole situation there was a lot of yeah. a lot of uh uh steps that went wrong here yeah they spent money yeah. backwards like they should have invested the amount of money they were investing in their studios and getting ports and vice versa yeah uh and uh i had a wired wired article in here that was basically a more in-depth uh look into like what was going on but i mean it all circles back to you know this is what happens when a company with all the money in the world just throws money to try and enter the video game market but doesn't really understand what that means because it also mentions uh amazon's constant attempts to make their own video games for you know fire tv or now lumia their their streaming service and Mm -hmm. they just they throw millions and millions of dollars at the problem but nothing works right nothing works because they don't know that like game development is not like you know all the other things they do where like there's structures and there's programs and like you know there's a schedule and whatnot game development constantly shifts and changes every hour and they're not used to something like that. I, I've said this over and over again, but I, I Google's fatal flaw was was uh, the, marketing the technology because, like it, that was that's it. Google Stadia is a technology. That is what you are selling. Mm-hmm. You are selling the streaming yeah. service. All of everybody's always talking about the killer app and whatnot, but that's that comes next. You know, all right. they did was get all the killer apps from every other console and try to put it on here, yeah. which is fine. But they failed at selling the 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 idea at all because they they put out that it's going to be 4K 60 and everybody got the idea that it's going to be 4K 60. And then all of a sudden it runs like shit and doesn't look like 4K 60. And yeah, that should have been it. It should have been this is 1080p. It's going to run great on your little Chrome browser. It's going to have free games. Or no, I'm sorry. It's gonna be free, and you buy the game, and then that's it. If you if you don't have well, a console thing. and you want to play yeah, Call no, of Duty, do, it's sixty dollars like to play in like the Chrome this, browser. And here's a demo. They, you could try it out. It works great. That's how they, they said it. People on it. were it's so free. against this idea 
of having to buy games on this like unproven thing that people so much of the gaming community doesn't even want this to be a thing that works right. like even if stadia worked perfectly people would still not want to buy into it i think that the way you lull people into getting into it is if you make it sound like the craziest steal if you're like all right dude 15 dollars a month you can stream yeah any of the games that came out in the yeah. last six months or whatever, you know, like that type of shit. Like, I think that that is how they won people over with Stadia or win people over with Stadia. But and they do then, the Netflix like, thing. Once, once they have you on the hook, they're like, all right, dude, you've been a Stadia subscriber for three years now. It's going up three bucks. Like you do that but shit. Even then, <laughs> like it wasn't even really clear. Cause they, they like implied that they were going to do that, but that's what it sounded like. Yeah. Kind of yep. hinting at like, it's you, you gotta buy all the games individually but they didn't really say like when the subscription side was going to take effect or mm -hmm. if you have to subscribe to it, you know, month for month, but still buy the games individually. Also probably the biggest thing that like nail in the coffin was, you know, they sold it on the idea where you can play the games on any device. You just need the controller. You just need a controller. You don't necessarily need a console, but at launch it was, uh, you need a Chromecast ultra with, that comes bundled with the controller and maybe a, a Chrome browser. And that's it. This, this grand idea that like you can play stadia on anything wasn't true. You can only that, play it on two things. That's the, the major problem. I mean, I would love the idea that it was a subscription service. That sounds great. And it works great for yeah. game pass, but it's, Google's problem was they were throwing millions and millions of dollars to collect a bunch of games like a game pass and microsoft yeah. already had that so google couldn't mm -hmm. really do that and they tried and they failed so i think i think there's nothing wrong with the piecemeal service that they had the only problem was getting people on board with it like have having them buy a hundred and thirty dollar $130 to get the Pro and you get the controller and you get the Chromecast. That's $130 buy-in to a service you don't even know is going to work. So it yeah. should just be, here's a free trial. Google's got the money for it. Here's a free trial. Here's one game. You got Destiny. You can see if it yeah. works. You can play it for a week. And if you like it, then you could buy just Destiny or Call of Duty or whatever. Because Cyberpunk came out and it ran great on Stadia. And people don't yeah, have yeah. an Xbox Series X and a PlayStation 5, and they could just pay $60 just to play Cyberpunk that in their Chrome honestly, browser. That was the best marketing Stadia had. Yeah, that was ever. the yeah. best thing. That was the best hand they, the, you know, ace they had up their sleeve. I mean, it sucks that it was a game mired in controversy, but yep. <laughs> they should have marketed the hell out of that. The best way to play the hottest game of the year, the most talked about game of the year, more accurately, mm -hmm. is on Stadia. And it's the cheapest way to play that game. Yes. If 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 they had the free version of Stadia, which I don't even know if they still do. <laughs> no. Honestly, like what they should have done, and I I I have a feeling AJ is gonna disagree with me here, but they should have gone the Epic Game Store route and maybe like bought up a couple of games and had them be exclusive to Stadia. Oh no, I don't disagree with you on that at all. Year. No, I like, agree. It worked for Epic, yeah. you know, if they if they said like, okay. Hitman 3, when it launches, it's going to be exclusive on Stadia. At least the PC version is exclusive to Stadia. That would have sold yeah, Stadia subscriptions I, because people want yeah, to play Hitman 3. I think people 3. would have been pissed about that, <laughs> but yeah. I think it would have worked better than what yeah. they did. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's uh, simpler and less and less uh, uh, risky than that. I think they literally, it's literally just a marketing thing. It's just in thing. how they package it. I, yeah. 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 I, it, the marketing I think what they had was solid the enough, idea. but their marketing was shitty. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Because anyway. I tried it when it was like the Project Stream or whatever the fuck it was. Granted, yeah. I have pretty good internet. Um, but it worked great. Dude, <laughs> I used Stadia on, on a hotspot. 2015 MacBook Pro. <laughs> like, I used Stadia on a hotspot on my phone going to my MacBook, and it ran great. And I played Destiny, and it felt great. So I could see my like myself when I was like in high school, when I like didn't have any money, and I was like pirating PC games. I could see myself just dropping sixty dollars to play the latest Call of Duty on on yeah. on Chrome, and that would be, mm -hmm. and I would have a great time with myself. Um. Anyway. Last thing, Need for Speed is delayed. Rip. 
Uh, dude, I didn't even know Need for Speed was a thing now. <laughs> well, was coming I'll out. Always like, assume that EA is making a Need for Speed game because it's like it is like one of their premier franchises. Well, this is they specifically Criterion. Criterion. Yeah, the Criterion, who famously made the Burnout games and actually made two excellent Need for Speed games in Hot Pursuit and Most Wanted. Um, they were starting to make a new Need for Speed game, but uh, it's being delayed because EA needs them to help DICE make Battlefield 6. Really? Uh, this concerns me because Activision <laughs> yeah, does what? this all the time. Activision will find a studio who is good at one thing and tell them, hey, you need to help Infinity Ward make Call of Duty. And then in a year or two, that studio just makes Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't necessarily think that EA will do this, but this is the first step into doing that. Why don't they just buy more studio? Like I would, that's what I would do. <laughs> like before, or like, like, you know, hire more people at dice. Yeah. Call of duty had, I'm trying to find it. I, I think even Warzone had like a million developers. Yeah. But yeah. Call of duty go over to developers and like, Oh, if you go back to Warzone mm. under developers and hover over, see where it says um, Raven, hover over the A, it should say. Additional work by High Moon Studios, Beanox, Sledgehammer Games, and Activision Shanghai, and Raven yeah. Software, and uh, Infinity Ward. <laughs> so so High, Noon, everybody. High Noon Studios used to make the tra those Transformers games mm -hmm. uh, that were very good. Um, they are now a Call of Duty studio. Beanox. Um, helped out with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater remake. Um, they are now a Call of Duty studio. Uh, Sledgehammer Games was made specifically to make Call of Duty games. And I didn't even know that Activision had a Shanghai office. Six developers for Warzone. The game's been yeah. out a year. One year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, uh, yeah, that sucks. What are they going to do? Put freaking uh, uh, car crashes in, in uh, like, live action car crashes in freaking <laughs> yeah, Battlefield? Um. I mean, Battlefield 5 was all right. Um, Battlefield 4 was okay. I like Battlefield yeah. 3 a lot. I played that. Battlefield 1 was Battlefield 1 wasn't bad. Yeah, I like Battlefield. Are we talking back about the, the first Battlefield or the newest the Battlefield? The World War 1 Battlefield. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about the original Battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's Battlefield 1942, you guys. I mean, oh the God. the coolest thing about Battlefield was that the maps were really big and there were a lot of players like it was it was like 50 versus 50 and stuff yeah and yeah. it was like destructible environments not, and shit that's not cool anymore <laughs> it's not having 50 having 100 people in a server isn't cool anymore we see i do that every every it's night true. <laughs> it's true we do we do um all right that's it for the news we're done uh I now talk about minecraft this whole time dude that new game that just came out yo minecraft's game of the year so far now we are talking to you people for a brief minute uh don't you want to do oh you're right i'm so dumb of me i don't even know if i can do this <laughs> i have to go here and then i gotta do this Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! it's tweet of the week hey. time you, you dummies you stupid idiots yeah um <laughs> This is Exciting Times from uh, Art Boy on Twitter. And it is the chibi version of the Pokemon <laughs> Brilliant Diamond girl going He's up done. against uh, Arctus. Arceus. Arceus. He's God. He's literally God. <laughs> I saw another tweet. That's why this is funny. But I saw another tweet. I think I retweeted it. That was also really funny. Um, this is it. Get in, loser. We're fighting God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That's another good one. That's good. All right. Now we'll talk to you people. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you have to comment on last week's Wolf Den Live over... Wolf Den Live. Jeez. If you have to comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show where we will answer it. And of course... Ladies and gentlemen watching us at home right now, please start leaving your questions and comments as we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. We got Luke Antone who says, what anime have you two been watching recently? 
Um, I haven't in a while, but I was trying to get through uh, Evangelion, and I'm oh, a little more than halfway through it, but I stop. I haven't watched it in a while. Uh, I recently I watched um, that Daft Punk anime they made for Discovery. Oh, I didn't uh, know that was a very thing. good, very interesting, very interesting. Yeah, basically for um, I think I'm pretty sure it was Discovery. The for the entire album, instead of making music videos, they just made a one long anime. I thought it was reused from a from an actual anime. No, it's I think it's brand it's brand new. Huh. What are you watching, AJ? I'm tell you, um, freaking, I don't watch things. I'm watching WandaVision, dude. That's the best anime. See, that's why I stopped watching uh, uh, Evangelion because I was like, I could just I should be watching WandaVision, and then I just don't. <laughs> it's true. WandaVision makes me mad though because I'm like, I want Will to explain this to me every week. Uh, okay. Like, like i know like i know like what's happening but i want you to talk about it <laughs> um melon says you guys are pretty good you should do a podcast i fucking hate you melon um <laughs> jeff thompson says i'm also shocked that tony hawk and republic commando were not part of the direct like what true <laughs> they should have put tony yeah. hawk in the direct yeah, Republic Commando, like, they announced that the day after the direct. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Emily Van Engen says, I've been playing video games my whole life, but specifically and mainly Nintendo systems. I definitely agree that compared to other consoles, the Nintendo s seems to put out more gender-neutral games that everyone can enjoy. I forgot what made us bring that up. I think we were, because we were talking, we mentioned um, the DC Superhero Girls. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Game and like how that got a prominent spot in the direct because the Switch has a very large female audience compared to I think what Nintendo initially thought and like the other game systems right. had. So yeah, uh I mean you can sort of see it cuz Xbox has always been, you know, geared towards the high school boy with Halo and Gears and the stuff. Angsty teen. Yeah. And um Sony, I they, they try to you know be all-encompassing but lately they've been they've been um, skewing a lot more male even the last of us which has like female protagonists it's like it's very you know dark and gritty and brutal and violent you know trying to get that male audience not saying that women don't like that shit but traditionally typically that is viewed as like in marketing that skews male mm -hmm. Uh, Nick Link says, can't wait to talk to my Nintendo Switch therapist. <laughs> that was because last week we talked about, um, you know, the, the Switch yeah, concierge. The, the Switch concierge service. The Nintendo Genius Bar. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, all right, we're in the chat for a minute. We got Har Car who says, Bob, do you use a Chemex or AeroPress for coffee? Um, I don't really make hot coffee that much anymore um i used to use a v60 which is pour over coffee um now i mostly just have lattes and uh i make cold brew every once in a while but uh yeah, yeah you I, break your coffee i thought you broke your coffee dude i broke my coffee my coffee's broken no I'm, my uh yeah. my fancy new grinder is broken but uh i uh, i use the hand grinder that i used to have now gotcha um have I talked about that on the podcast? How the freaking I had to like put a spacer in it because it was get the grind had to be finer and finer on my brand new fancy coffee grinder, and uh, I had to put a spacer in it so the burrs are close together. And when I did that, it fucked something up with the safety mechanism, and now it thinks that it the safety's on all the time, which is apparently a known issue with this thing. So now it's just broken, and I just have to send it back. But I'm too lazy to do that. But you better hurry up before. You run out of. I'll just, I'll, I'll yeah. just, I'll just be an asshole when that happens. <laughs> if that, if I run out of warranty, I just, I, um, gonna, I like that you, you would like I'm also use that Karen. phrasing. <laughs> I'm going to become a Karen when that happens. Um, the most soul says my grinder broke too. I put too much weed in it now. It won't open. Oh my lord. Sounds like a different problem. Different type of grinder. Yeah. <laughs> Chris BX, Bob, did you register for the Mario pin set? Yes, actually, I did that today. Apparently, they were still available. I worry about you and want you to be happy. Thank you, Chris BX. <laughs> I did, I did do it today. Uh, so I, 
I tried last week and the site was down and it, I kept refreshing for like an hour and it never came back up. Um, but no, I did my pin set. I paid the $5 shipping. Those bastards. And yeah. uh, I will be getting it. So between the two of us, we, we have both pin set up oh, and they're on the floor. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> so between the two of us, we have both pin sets. <laughs> you bastard. Uh, wait, let me see those pins. I have a couple here. I don't know if these uh, if these are similar. Oh, yep. Yeah, this is the same as the original Mario one. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Sick. So I could have just bought them all at the... But the problem is, this was $25 for these three pins. Really? <laughs> and that was $5 for you for shipping, right? Yeah. <sighs> uh, Kate... M Kate McCat, did y'all see the tweet of the kid who made Rainbow Road in Animal Crossing? I did, and I think I saw you retweet it. I think that's what I saw. Uh, I did not see that. I saw somebody recreated the entire first act of Hamilton in Animal Crossing. That was fun. Oh, no. Would you ever try Dead by Daylight for the Switch? Maybe? I don't know. I, play, I, get that, uh, I get that game confused with every other game that's like that. No, like, yeah. I get that game confused with like seven days to die or whatever the fuck. I almost, I and... almost played that game at E3, um, but it crashed. Rip. And we couldn't play it. <laughs> this is uh, why they need to... Well, actually, I was about to say that's why they need to close E3 to the public, but E3 is probably close to everybody now. Rip, dude. Yeah. Who would have missed it? Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> uh what else uh i'm loving the mario pipes it's very cool to walk across the island yeah that is a cool addition to animal cross to be able, able to warp to a different part of the island but does it take a thousand years to load is the question <laughs> um what wallpaper does everyone have on their home phones home screen we're not getting into that we're not doing that <laughs> okay my mine is uh is is a picture I took of the Empire State Building. I can't really. Mine show it. is just oh, the bat fuck. the Batman logo against the black background. It's that there, there we go. So this is also the same thing on my. You gotta do it. You gotta do it in front of your face, AJ. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to lower the brightness. It's too bright. I try to make all my devices, my iPad, my phone, my laptop, all have the same background oh it's squirt that's what batman would do it's squirt yeah you know mine is uh oh hey this is a better picture the, the empire state building is red in the middle that was when the pandemic started and the empire state <laughs> building was red all the time and now they just gave up <laughs> so like the rest of us yes anyway dude thank, it's like march 368th or something like yeah that. thank you for hanging out everybody thank you for tuning in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf den podcast is every single tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put up an archive version of it over on the youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf den podcast so you can watch it on demand whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can do that as well we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolf den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice no matter where you get the wolf den podcast from though make sure you subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms special thanks to aj for stopping by from fanatics 4 thanks, and man. helping us with the pokemon talk keeping us on the straight and narrow because fucked if we know what we're talking about <laughs> me and AJ, I do twitch. me and aj have been playing minecraft together over on twitch.tv slash fanatics four um it's have, true i i'm gonna have my grand opening of my coffee shop on thursday thursday That's night sick. grand opening of, of bob's big bean where we're off the bean if you know what i mean dude who should I raid, AJ? Who should I raid? I do. I will play Minecraft later tonight, but I have to finish getting B roll for E nice. for a video. Um, uh, who should I raid? Okay, wait. Let me see. Scootish is doing a podcast right now, not on his channel, on somebody else's channel, and it says number one gaming podcast, and I'm a little mad about it. When did when did it start? Oh no, we can't raid him. And fuck that. Okay. Uh, I mean, Wood is streaming. We can raid Wood. You want to raid Wood? All right. 
Guys, go watch Wood. Say Everybody. hi to Wood. <laughs> Raid him and tell him he's Walmart version Bob. No, don't say yeah, that. Say that. <laughs> yes, say that. <laughs> you know what? Maybe it's time he hears in that fact. instead of me. <laughs> Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse. All right, be nice or don't. I, you're not. I'm not your dad, or am I your dad? Uh, go over there, say hello, and then I'll see you later. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good time. Bye. Bye. -bye.